Hey guys, Rich here. Welcome back to the RC Informer YouTube channel. Just do a quick sound check, make sure we got uh, got good audio for everybody. I'm showing a good green bar down at the bottom. And uh, it's been a while since we've gone live, so welcome back everybody. Thanks everyone for coming. And uh, if you guys don't mind, send me a message. And uh, just let me know you guys got good audio. We got lots of stuff to talk about today. New airplanes to discuss, lots of videos going out and stuff. So, uh... Yeah, 64 millimeter Futura is amazing. Got a bunch of them here to show you. And then we're going to unbox our F-16, show you some afterburners and stuff. So uh, let's see what we got. I got, uh, got a couple guys here online now saying, uh, hey, Rich, uh, uh, and that's from uh, Grum. Let's see, Mike Bird's in the house. Um, so guys, give me some thumbs up. Let me know you're hearing everything okay. And uh, we'll get rolling on this thing. So I'm going to do a quick check of uh, everything going on here. I got my pan and tilt working okay. It's been a while since I've used this stuff, so got to make sure everything's uh, doing its thing so we can do what we got to do. We'll check our upper camera. Let's see what we got. Make sure that's working. Got my black hole camera working perfectly. Thumbs up. And uh, let's see. I got thumbs up from everybody. Is it loud enough? Can you guys get good audio? Because I've had complaints in the past where guys can't hear anything, so I'm getting lots of good thumbs up. Jeff's Custom RC is in the house, so thanks for coming, Jeff. It's been a while, guys. I've been so busy working and flying, so I just got called. I was going to do a bunch of stuff this weekend, even though the weather was horrible down here in Florida, but I got a call Wednesday night to go out Thursday, and I ended up being flying a 10-hour flight down the jungles of South America on our way to Buenos Aires and back, so flew 20 hours over the last couple of days, so I'm uh, just now starting to wake up. So Adam Hampton's in the house. Glad to see you here, Adam. And uh, let, me, uh, let me scroll down just a little bit and uh, to the top here. First guy in the house was Jess Harris. And uh, Victor RC is here in the house. Let's see who else we got here. And uh, we're going to let guys kind of roll on in here a little bit and uh, see, what, uh, see who all comes in, trying to get everybody a little chance to get in here. So I actually started sort of semi on time this time. For once, I hate to say this, I had no technical difficulties so far, so <laughs> we'll see. Usually got microphone errors, and in fact, I'm, um, I'm actually showing on my, my green audio bar there, my mic bar, that it looks like there's a little static, but it sounds like you guys are getting everything okay, so uh, very good. All right, cool. Uh, Eric B's in the house, and uh, let's see, Slow Fire, Flyer 85, I think, is there. Put my glasses on here for a second. Yep. And uh, let's see who we got. Uh, Eric, R Eric Quinn's in the house, EQRC, Floyd Stanford. All right, awesome. So we'll give everybody a little more time to get in. I'll give you guys a couple of previews of some stuff. Um, we got lots of stuff coming to the channel. I'm going to try and put out more videos. Now that I'm sure you guys saw the video, um, we got our own field. So we did that about a year ago. We've been working on it, and I've been spending. That's why I haven't had a lot of videos out lately because I've been spending most of my time out there kind of prepping it and stuff. So we're going to turn it into a really nice flying facility. So um, again, it's AMA chartered, um, also FRIA approved with the FAA. So, so we're good to fly out there with any remote, without any remote ID. So, so you know, as we get it set up, we're going to start inviting people out to fly with us and all sorts of stuff. And we'll probably do, you know, like small events and shows and things like that there. So lots of stuff is coming to the field. So it's really cool. So uh, we'll be updating everybody. Just watch for new videos. We'll be putting out uh, updates as we kind of go along. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Tiger Eurocopter's in the house. And uh, let's see. Charlie Williams is in. All right. Just calling some names off. Uh, 27 guys here, so we'll wait for a few more to come. Um, let's see. The lineup for today. I got a little list of stuff here. The lineup for today is uh, just going to talk about some of the new videos, the new field that we got set up, and um, uh, we got to talk about the KMRC afterburner right here. So this is the new version four. I've been doing the KMRC stuff since they first came out, and this is the latest and greatest V4. And if I can get it to work, we're going to put it inside the F-16. So let's see what kind of time we get. But uh, uh, my singularity is opening up there, so it's going to swallow my... Uh, my afterburner there in the package. So these are some of the nicest though. I, I really like this new one especially. And uh, so we'll get into that. And then uh, Futura 64s, so we'll talk a little about that. I just put up a couple videos. I'm probably the last guy to put videos out on it because I've been so busy, but 
it flies great. We're going to be doing a little more flying with all of them too. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that from FMS. This thing's really nice. It's a nice little version. There's the big one up there. So we can do a size comparison if you guys want. So there's the 80 millimeter FMS right up there. So, um, and uh, what else we got? Uh, what's my list here? Uh, uh, the Blue Jay from Fair RC. We're going to have videos on this thing really soon. And I really want to show you guys this. This thing is awesome. I was kind of, I was real impressed with it. Um, this is essentially the Fair RC version, which Fair RC is a subsidiary of FMS. So um, this is basically their 1220 millimeter Ranger. So, um, but they put it in a different trim package. I wish they painted the window and I'll talk about that when I do the, 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 the full flight demo because I'm I gotta edit that video and throw it out. And I'm gonna try to do that this week for everybody. But um, it's, this is, comes in a ready-to-fly format. Um, it, I don't think it has the doesn't have the floats with it, but um, it has its own radio with it. But the cool thing about this thing is that it, it obviously it's the same airplane as that FMS 220 Ranger, uh, except um, it's ready to fly and it's really inexpensive. It's actually I think it's like 169 bucks or something. So, and uh, I was surprised because usually ready-to-fly packages when you get them, you know the radios are kind of eh, kind of iffy. And uh, this is what you get with it. You get a fly sky. It's a four channel. This is what it looks like. So, and actually I can probably do a little top view on that. But the cool thing about this airplane is that um, it flies fantastic. I mean, I was really impressed by how well it flew, um, just like the Ranger, but with the stock radio, which is, this is what you get with it. So this is by far the cheapest way that you can get into RC, at least I think anyway, where you have a full feature, just airplane, you know, uh, four channel, so it's aileron, elevator, rudder, and throttle. That's all you need. No expo, no dual rates, nothing. But we set it up in such a way that, man, it flew great. So, you know, there's a lot of ready-to-fly stuff that I won't even show on the channel because they're kind of eh. But the airplane's outstanding. The radio gets the job done. And somebody that wants to get into RC, because it has the battery, it has a charger, someone who wants to get into it very low cost and learn to fly, I can tell you it's a very good trainer for that and the radio flies it very well. So you can learn to fly inexpensively with this thing from Fair RC. So I got links below for this if you guys want to check this out. I, I, again, I got a full video coming out on it here really soon. So, um, cause I can't say enough uh, good things about it. We literally unboxed it, assembled it, flew it, did a little adjustment and kept flying it at, right at the field. And again, that video is going to come out real soon. But again, same plane as the FMS 220 Ranger. Okay. Exact same plane, just different paint scheme, sold by the subsidiary of FMS, you know, Fair RC, but, but, but you know, for like, like I said, at the time it's 169 bucks. That can change at any point, point. and I have coupon cones below, so I don't know if some of them will apply or not, but if you guys know anybody that wants to get into RC and do it cost effectively, this is it. This is a beautiful flying airplane. Um, again, even as a trainer plane, it's awesome, but you can, you can transition into aerobatics. It flies inverted, does loops and rolls. Great for takeoff and landing practice. We did a whole bunch of that. So, Stay tuned, guys, for the full video on that. We'll be putting that out here pretty soon. Um, and then what else we got? Um, uh, Ernst RC, we'll talk a little bit about that, the stands. We're going to be using that to assemble the F-16 here. And uh, our Hobby Zone Avanti, we launched a couple videos on this thing. Um, by far, of all the EDFs that are hand-launched ones that I've had so far, by far this is the nicest one. It's a sport jet, obviously, it's not scale. But I did do videos on this, and they're on the channel, so check it out. Um, it's three cell. You can throw a 4S in it. It's very clean set up. But I have an unboxing assembly of this on the channel that we just put out, so check it out. Great model. I mean, I'm not really the biggest fan of the hand launch stuff. I like taking off and landing. But um, we did some landings of this thing um, on our new felt runway, and it was awesome. I mean, we did it on the grass, too. But, but real aerobatic, nice flyer. I mean... Pretty quick for what it is, and uh, just a nice airplane. So, um, links below for that too, if you guys want to check it out. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, the L39. We're gonna have that out here soon. I did some nose modifications to mine. <laughs> this was the uh, uh, where was the old? One? Oh, here it is. You know, if you guys remember seeing uh, what was that movie? Uh, Spaceballs. We're gonna give your daughter back her old nose. Yeah. So this was. They sent me another nose because I cartwheeled this plane a bunch of times. Not because there's anything wrong with the plane, but uh, we just had a windy day and we were tired and stuff and we flew it around. But I cartwheeled this, the heck out of this thing and, uh, and just kept flying it. So they sent me a new nose cone, which is nice. So they got new, new parts for it. So we wrinkled it a bit, but fantastic flyer. So 
we'll be showing this in some future videos too. So you know, stay tuned. We'll be uh, we'll be getting that out as soon as uh, we can. Let me let me test my uh, my zoom on this too. Uh, let me go. Uh, let me test that out and see what we got. Yeah, there we go. So there it is. Again, I cracked it in half, rolled it, flipped it, drove it straight into the ground, and man, it kept going. So again, Hobby Zone, check it out there. Great flyer. Again, we'll have videos coming out. I think they've been out of stock for a while, so probably November or something, I think, is when they're going to be back in stock. So, uh, But again, videos coming on that too. So uh, again, just a little preview of some of this stuff that uh, we have coming out here. We've been working with Hobby Zone for a long time promote some of their stuff and they're real cool people over there. So uh, let's see what we got on the question board here. Uh, yeah, let's see Charlie Williams. Oh, hey, let's see Les Burnham's here from, uh, some, from uh, Sutherland on the uh, on C Essex. All right, excellent. Uh, who else we got? Chris Dolan's there. He's got a hand up waving. And uh, Mark Atkins is back. I'm just reading the list down there. So uh, Brian Chambers is here. All right, uh, let's see. So how many guys we got? I think we'll start in on some of this stuff. Um, all right, good. We got about 35 or so guys here or something. So we'll probably get rolling on this. Um, let me throw up a couple of these websites and stuff. Let me see if I can throw this thing. Now that's my, uh, that's that page. Let's go to here. Um, so here you go, guys. Just what I was talking about. Lots of new videos on the channel. So check those out. You know, we, got, we just put those two Futuras out. No, no, go back. Let me go back to that real quick. Where's this thing at? Yeah, here we go. Uh, new videos on the channel. And also we've been doing Motion RC stuff, as you guys know, with the new field. You know, we've been out there with Wesley at Motion flying, you know, a bunch of this stuff. So, um, you know, uh, we're gonna have a lot of Motion stuff coming. So he's been literally coming out there, you know, handing me airplanes and saying, here, fly this. And so, and without building it or setting it up or anything. And that's sort of what we've been showing you guys. So there'll be more of that, more of that to come. We just did the uh, PJ-50, we did the Bearcat, and uh, anyway, our, our runway videos, of course, assembling it. Yeah, the B-25 is fun to fly. That's a good airplane if you guys want a good scale model. Um, velocity's quick, all that kind of stuff. So check out all that there, and then uh, let's see what else we got here. Let me go to the next uh, page here. Uh, we're going to go in first with the KMRC afterburner. We'll talk about that. I have it, uh, I have it set up right here. Um, let me see. Do you guys have any questions before we start? Feel free to, you know, throw out what you got at me. Um, uh, KMRC is really awesome. They're super nice, uh, super nice guy over there. And uh, let's see. Uh, let me get back to uh, real quick the chat log real quick. So, you guys got any questions? You guys want to throw anything at me before we start? I see Sean uh, Patterson's or Peterson. Sorry, Sean Peterson's in there. He's from uh, from Durban, uh, South Africa. All right and uh, outstanding. Yeah, Brian Chambers was saying, yeah, Fly Sky works great, which it really does. Like I said, I, I normally don't like to do or recommend like ready to fly packages sometimes because a lot of times they're just kind of iffy. This one is not really inexpensive. You know, in the old days when we flew RC planes, there was no, there was no expo. There was no dual rates. There was no, you just mechanically adjusted things and that was it. So you didn't have all the fancy electronic programming. This is one of those planes that you can fly that way. So, and you can't, for bang for the buck, with the battery and all that, all you gotta do is add four, four double A's to your transmitter that, and you're flying. So, and, and you can learn on that. A, a new guy can learn on that plane. So, uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, Rich, what does the Iron Cross wing behind you go to? Oh yeah, that's an old, I, I need to get that going. That's, that's for uh, an Albatross, that's, um, which I did videos unboxing and started an assembly, but I just hadn't finished the airplane. That's a Dancing Wings plane. So, and that's one of those many planes that, man, every time I get to working on it, I get called to go fly and I gotta go to work. So it's like, ugh, you know, so that's one I really, with the new field, we're gonna get that one out there and fly it here soon too. So, um, but we're building the building out there. So it's gonna be a flight line building. It's gonna be airplane storage, workshop, all that kind of stuff. It's gonna be right there at the field. So. Um, stay tuned to the channel, guys, because we got cool stuff coming with, with the field. Not only building up the field, building up the runway, um, but also um, um, a lot of flying, a lot of, a lot of demos and things we're going to do. So we're going to be inviting everybody out to fly, too, so you guys can come from wherever you are and come on out and fly with us. So we'll probably do weekend stuff. You know, we'll probably do uh, day events, two-day, three-day, maybe week events even here. So it'll be fun. So stay tuned, and all that will be coming. So... Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, 
Yeah, it's a biplane right there, yeah. A fuselage is downstairs, so um, let's see. Looking at the chat log here, I got a new kitten who may come bother us here. If you guys saw the Futura Unbox, she was in it, so she's over there now, so she may come over here. Let's see. Uh, so, uh, all right, Wes is here from Motion RC. What's up, Rich? He's out with the family at SeaWorld, hoping to have a great show today. Yeah, so Wes, is, uh, Wes has been pretty cool. Wes and the Motion RC gang have been uh, pretty cool bringing the planes out for me to fly, some of the motion stuff. So, again, we'll be seeing more motion stuff. Interesting thing is, is when I found the property, I was like, huh, that's, that's pretty close to Wesley's house. So it's actually a lot closer to him than me. And then when he saw the video, he was like, hey, could we do some film in there and stuff? And I said, yeah, you guys can fly there. So, so Motion RC will be out there flying a bunch with me. I'll be flying with them a little bit. You know, we'll be kind of working together and stuff, which is kind of nice. It works out really well uh, kind of for everybody. So they've been really cool and just handing me planes to fly and stuff. So, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. I've been flying with Wes for years now when he was doing all the Mary Boozer stuff. And um, so, yeah, Wesley's been really helping me out. Get the runway, getting the runway set up. He and I almost single-handedly glued the entire one entire row of the runway on uh, on the like the next weekend we worked on it and stuff. And um, so he's been helping me mow the lawn and all that kind of stuff. So the two of us are kind of working the field sort of together kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see what else. Uh, who else we got here? Uh, Chris Dolan. Uh, here I think I see one in my future. That's what uh, Chris Dolan's saying. Uh, uh, what do you do for work, Rich? Oh, um, I fly a, uh, a Boeing 757 and a 767 for a major airline. I won't say who it is just because maybe they want their name mentioned, but, but yeah, I literally just last Thursday flew 10 hours down to, um, uh, Buenos Aires, Argentina, and then, uh, we stayed a little while and then flew right back. So I, I literally, I'm just sort of still recovering from, you know, 20 hours of flying. So we left at about midnight, landed in Atlanta about nine o'clock in the morning so yeah long but that happens to me sometimes i'm getting ready to work on a plane getting ready to do an unbox for you guys or do some editing or something and boom i get a call it's like yeah you kind of have to go so um uh but no worries we'll get uh we'll get more done and get out as much as we can so um but let's see uh have you fly flown the f9f cougar yes chris dolan i have it's freaking awesome <laughs> we shot a video of it the other day of me flying it and stuff so so i'm going to be cranking that one out too and i'm trying to meter them and get them out like i'm actually trying to put out like at least one maybe two or three a week even now because um you know a lot of flying rc planes is setting them up and getting them out there and all that well wesley shows up with a with a with a trailer full of planes <laughs> and he's like hey fly this fly this fly this so it makes it kind of easy um you know thanks to wes for bringing that stuff out where i can just literally pick it up and show it to you so um a lot of these motion planes i don't really ever even you know assemble or anything i will in the future with some of them probably but it's kind of cool because i just get to pick it up look at it talk about it show you some things that's all real genuine i hadn't flown them before he's handing them to me and i'm flying them and it's fun doing that he's like yeah if it crashes don't worry about it so it's kind of nice when you're not worried about it but the cougar is awesome it's a slick airplane so um uh, it flies fantastic so and you'll see some takeoffs and landings and aerobatics and high speed stuff we did that I did with it. So I just got to edit that video. That's one of many that's coming up here probably within the next week or two. So um, I'll be doing definitely some editing. So uh, for you guys and getting more out. So more's coming, cool stuff's coming. So, you know, uh, let's see, how do you CG a triplane uh, carefully? Uh, we'll talk about that later when I work, get it going. Um, let's see, Cougar, let's see. I see them a few, uh, let's see. Wes is there. He says, I think Rich might have a new favorite high alpha plane on his table. That's right, the F-16. So we're going to get this out and get it going. I'm pumped because I only watched a piece of Wesley's video. And uh, just a little, I saw that he did it. And he's like, he's like, hey, when you want to, just, just do you know, show it off and whatever. So this is really new to me. I haven't, I haven't even cracked the box open on this. I, I didn't even look in it. So so it's going to be a discovery thing for me, too, just like you. So we'll be looking at it for the first time kind of together here. So uh, let's see. What do we got? Um, uh, are you a full-time pilot from Sean Peterson? Yes. Yeah, that's, that, I mean, that's my day job is flying airplanes. So, you know, when I was seven, eight, nine years old, you know, I was building plastic and wood airplanes, models. Then I progressed into RC cars, I think, when I was like 10. And then by 13, I was I started into helicopters. I flew RC choppers. Um, I did a lot of that gas, 60-size powered stuff, 28-powered uh, Robo stuff, and 
Hyman Schluter and all that. So I flew all that. Then got into airplanes later. So, so then I went full scale, flight instructor, all that kind of stuff. Regional airlines, major airlines. So that's, that's what I'm doing now. Now I'm doing, still doing models. I've, I've never stopped doing models. So it's been 40 <laughs> plus more years, you know, of, of building, flying RC planes. So yeah, I've been doing a long, long time. So uh, let's see. Um, so yeah, when you guys see me disappear or I'm not making videos or something, it's because, you know, there's a huge pilot shortage going on and I got to go fly, which I'm not complaining about, but that's, that's kind of what, uh, you know, got to pay the bills first. You know, I've got one kid in college who just started and three more to go. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, so got to get them all to school. You know, that's kind of the most important thing really. So, all right, everyone back to playing uh, with uh, Shamu. Uh, I'll catch up a replay tonight. That's Wesley. So, so he's saying he hopes everybody likes the F-16. So thanks, Wes and Motion RC, for letting me guys let me show you guys the camo F-16. He did he did an unbox assembly of the gray one. Okay, so you know, um, and in fact, uh, you know what I'll do right here, real quick, is I'll throw this up for you guys, so you can see. Let me go to my touch screen there. So um, this is the page. You just go to Motion RC, and you can see um, that, that these are all the F-16s on their uh, on their page. And I'm going to be showing you the camera one, but these are available now, guys. This is V3 of the airplane, okay? I know it says V2 here, but they use the old box. This was a surprise to Motion RC. It just sort of showed up as a V3 where, you know, they added a flying tail, and um, they got, went away with the old elevator. Even the pictures are, are on the, you'll see on the screen uh, right there. Um, uh, those are the old pictures, but same color scheme, but instead of an elevator and a horizontal stabilizer and an elevator, now it's a full flying tail. whole thing moves, so suspension landing gear, a lot of new features. So we'll go into that here in a second because um, I'm going to show you this burner first because I want to go into the burner first because we may throw this in there and it's quick. To, I can do this, this thing here pretty quick. So um, let me look real fast though and see if anybody had any more last minute questions. All right, everyone back. Oh, there's Wesley. Let's see. Uh, Logic was my favorite RC pilot overseas. I'm a big South African fan of you all. Yeah, that's Sean uh, Peterson. So, wow, he's long, far away away watching it. Uh, Hey Sean, what time is it there in uh, in uh, in South Africa? Uh, what what time of day is it over there? I, I could look it up, but uh, curious to see. I'm guessing it's a little bit later here. So um, we got 43 guys in the house. I want to thank everyone for coming. Definitely. Um, uh, let's see, John. Uh, oh, I'm gonna have to use my glasses for that. For some reason, I can't see that. Uh, John Leeby. Leeby. He's been following the new airfield videos. Looking good. Um, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing how nice it's going to be. Yeah, we, the first runway we put down, it's a test runway. We just wanted to try it on a short version, see how it worked on grass without doing any prep work. Just slap that thing down there because the guys at Triple Tree gave us the stuff to try out, see if we could get it to work, how we would join it together. So far, it's working really well. So before doing a 300-foot version of that thing with that material, we wanted to put a small one down, see how it was to assemble, he, see how it was easy to install, and then see maybe over time here, a couple months, see how it holds up to the elements. So, and so far it's working out pretty nicely. So, um, it's low enough there, the grass, that we can just fly off the grass. So, you know, we've been, we've been doing both. But when it's done, it'll have a nice big runway, both grass, both, um, uh, it's not geotextile, it's a fabric, but, um, or a, um, a felt. Um, but, um, and then we may even have cross runways and stuff. We may even put in a lake a little pond for floats, float planes and stuff. So we may do all of that stuff. Or, uh, but we'll see how it goes over time. Um, next thing is the building. So that's what we're getting first, uh, getting to do first. So let's see. Uh, let's see what we got. Rich, uh, see a bigger model of the SR-71. Got pictures of the real one um, at, uh, at Lakeland. Was that Lakeland Air Force Base or Lackland Air Force Base in Texas? Okay. And this is uh, Saltwater Can Be Fun. Uh, love your videos, very detailed, all the watching uh, you for some years. Yeah, hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Um, uh, appreciate that. Uh, let's see what we got. Um, um, yeah, part of my reason, guys, for, uh, oh, it's 1925 there. Oh, no, Mike Bird, 1925. Uh, is that time? Oh, shoot, I can't even see that darn thing. Let's see. Where do we put that thing? 1925. GB. Oh, that's, uh, is that, oh, he's probably price down. Oh, Sunday evening, Rich, at uh, 825. Okay, I figured it was a few hours later there. Time change. 
uh, F8F. Uh, could be one for the stacks. Yeah, I may talk to Guniak about that. He's talking about Guniak's got these light stacks that I've been meaning to show you too. It's been I've been delayed on so for the exhaust pipe stacks and stuff. So um, and we'll be going into that. So uh, let's see, Floyd. Uh, oh man, I really can't see that one. Uh, Floyd uh, Stanfler, the fourth, multi runways and uh, uh, yeah, and water for uh, for float planes. Yeah, we may be doing all that. Maybe even a crawler course too. So we're looking and doing a lot of things out at the field. So, um, but uh, but yeah, it's nice. You know, I just the thing is, is I have little, not great access to flying fields here, and I I wanted to do a little investing in property, so I just bought a nice farmland. We got cows on there and all that kind of stuff. So um, uh, not at the moment, but they go on and off. The neighbor puts them on there. So it's a cow pasture, and uh, yeah. So uh, you know, when it comes to flying fields, you know, they're always. They're always putting us at landfills with the garbage, which kind of tells you where we are on the totem pole. So um, I kind of figured let's 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 raise the class a little bit. Let's make a little nicer place. And um, you know, Pat Hartness at Triple Tree said, "Hey, Rich, if you was smart, he goes, he goes, Rich, if you was smart, he goes, you'd get your own field and invite your friends to fly. And that's what we're gonna do. So it's gonna be fun. We'll have everybody come on out. So uh, all right, guys, let's get to it. Um, we're gonna start off with the afterburner." And uh, I'm going to switch my camera view here, I think, is what we're going to do. So here we go. This is, um, I'm just going to do this from the top real quick. This is the, uh, let me see if I can zoom on this, or I'll just bring this up here. Um, uh, KMRC model burners. I've got the link down below. We've been doing KMRC since day one. since We were the first ones showing it off. I think they're some of the best burners around, or at the very least, the most value for the money. And it's amazing the features that these things have. So, um, and in fact, I'm going to slide it off this way, I think. And uh, let me see if I can get that a little more in the middle. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. And when you get this out of the package, in fact, I already got one out of the package. I'm going to put it up here so you guys can see this thing. This is one I already pulled out. Drop my knife. And inside the package, it comes with what you see here. It's all wrapped up. As you can see here, I don't want to take this one out. It's all wrapped up around there. But when you pull it out, here's what you get. And um, inside the package now, they also have a couple of screws. So let me zoom in on this real quick. Let me go, I'll get down on this. So let me go, go here into the middle. Yeah, here we go. Now you not only get the afterburner itself, a little camera shake there. Let me see if I can stop that. All right, you get the zip ties, which is normal, to zip it in place. They end up giving us an extra. Plus a couple of screws. Now, what the screws are for is they added, and this is nice, they added a couple holes, which you can snip those off with a pair of pliers or plush cutters. But those two screw holes are designed to bolt directly to the back of the freewing 80 and 90 millimeter uh, motors. So you don't even need to use the zip ties if you don't want to with this particular one. So... Um, um, now, we have the 70 millimeter F-16 in the box, so we're going to see if it'll fit, because honestly, when I talked to, uh, talked to him yesterday at um, KMRC Models, you know, he indicated that um, he wasn't sure if it fit the new 70 motor, so we'll try. Let's see. Let's see if the bolt, screw hole is good enough. If it's not, we're probably just going to bolt it on, or we'll see if we can get that, get that done during this, uh, this showing here. So, um, so let me pan this out real quick, just a little bit. I'm going to put the screws away. And I'm going to put the zip ties away, and we're going to plug this in and just fire it up for everybody. So let me grab a battery. I'm going to grab this Admiral pack I got sitting here, and I'm going to grab my tester. And uh, I'm going to plug this baby in just so we can show it off to everybody. I messed with it a little bit here a little while ago, and it's nice. I mean, this thing, it's got five, uh, what am I doing? Yeah, it's got five, uh, five settings now. We plug this in. Uh, yeah, let's go to here. Hopefully we don't make any smoke. And there you go, guys. Do not look directly into the light. But this is it right here. So um, you zoom in a little bit. You guys can get a good, uh, good view on that. And as I throttle up, I think I'm in the, the, the number one setting. So the cool thing is, is the new ones have a button. And the button is right here. You can see it right there. And you have a little light. You can calibrate the throttle. You can turn it on or off during idle. Right now it's on during idle. But as you increase your throttle, you can see it gets a little brighter. It has a nice little flicker to it already. And then um, this is just your orange mode, and I'm trying not to look right at it. You see how bright it gets. You don't want to have it too bright again without airflow, so I'm just going to show it for little bursts. 
Um, so you press the button one time, okay, it goes to the second mode. As we advance it, it starts getting a little brighter, and I think the blue lights start coming on, and it turns into sort of a purplish, bluish, and then you can see how, you know, you, that's the second mode. Um, I don't know what they specifically call that color, but I'm going to press the button one more time, go into the third stage. It's just similar, it starts getting bright, and then I think the blues come on, and then also the, the, the orange starts getting a little duller, okay? So again, I don't want to smoke this thing, so I'm checking the temperature as I'm doing this. Now I'm going to press to go into the fourth stage, okay? And then that just goes to blue. At least I think that, well, actually, you know what? I think the orange still comes on here. So it starts off in a dull blue. So when you're at idle power, you know, you can see a blue flame inside your burner. And then when you increase it, you start getting orange coming in. And then the orange comes in, and I think the blue chimes in, and you get another orangey-blue kind of combination. It's just a different mode. And then lastly, I think that when you click the button one more time, um, let me see what it goes to. It goes to an orange and a blue, both together. And I think there's a blue mode here somewhere. Maybe I missed that. There it is, the last mode. So it's four or five. I think it's five settings that it's got. And I think this one just stays blue. So you have a good option, you know, good options on how to set this thing. I'll press it one more time. And then, um, so there we go. We're back to the beginning. Just standard orange, light flicker at the low end, you know, and then, uh, and then bring it on up. So really nice, guys. I just love the way that this is so simple that you can do it all with one button, really, and you just zip tie it to your motor. So designed for in-runners, but you can put it on an out-runner. It's got these little holes right here, here, and here. So you can run wires through and run a wire, a cage type thing, um, around your outrunner motor. So you can install this on outrunners. Then you can just clip these, snip these off. You don't need all that hanging out there. So yeah, you can install this on an outrunner. That's what that's designed for. So I'll probably show you that here in a future video. Um, another feature too that it does have, um, it's got a low voltage cutout. So if this thing, if this thing starts, um, if you start getting low voltage on your battery, your, your, your burner starts to flicker to tell you your battery's going down, which is a great feature. You know, it's really, really nice. And then if you press and hold this button for three seconds and then release it, it shuts off at idle. And then you can calibrate where it comes on and off. So as I advance this, you'll see it starts to come on. So the guys that really want it scale, you got no afterburner at idle. And then it comes on at 20%, 30%, 40%, wherever you calibrate it with the throttle when you have the thing set up. So, so probably about one of the nicest, you know, and, I, and we call it, you know, it's the universal afterburner. So from a distance, you guys can see, uh, here, let me take the, uh, let me take the, uh, the, the, let me put the afterburner on full time here. I'll press it and hold it for three seconds. Boom, pops right back on. But this will give you an idea just, you know, at a distance how bright, you know, this thing does get. So, um, and then I'll cycle to another mode. So, um, I got links for this below, guys. I don't, you know, we don't have an affiliate with them, but, but I work with them. So, you know, um, it's one of the coolest burners around. We love the purple mode. It just looks really good. We've had it in several videos and stuff. So check it out at KMRC. And at time permitting, if we get this set up, we'll throw this in there and we'll kind of go crazy with it. So we'll, sh we'll show, it, show, you know, show it off. So, um, so let me unplug all this. Has anybody got any questions about this now that I've been looking at that thing and I can't see <laughs> anything? Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. We eventually have uh, a flight club for members. We might. We might. We're working on that right now. We may do that for right now. It's just the field is just a private field. Um, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll we're gonna in the future we're gonna have people come out. We'll do some invites and some shows and some events and things. It'll be like a very miniaturized version of like a Joe Nall where you have people come out and fly. You know, it's not the biggest property in the world. It's not as big as them, of course. Uh, but that, but we'll have people out. So, uh, what else we got? Uh, cool stuff. So, who makes the tester you're using? Oh, this is a, this is a just a hobby king, guys. Let me, uh, let me test out my, my zoom here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is an old, 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 Turnigy brand, I think. So, you know, I've had this a long time, and it's held up pretty good. I just have a, here, I have a, uh, I have a Velcro that I have it, see it says Turnigy under there, under the Velcro, so I just, I just put that on there because it keeps the battery with it so I don't lose it, because I use it for stuff like this all the time. You guys know when I build stuff, I use this to get the landing gear down without having to stall the radio, or I use this to test a servo, if servo seems bad or something, so, so anyway. So that is it guys, KMRC, check it out. I will one time here, one more time here, just throw, throw that back up here on the list. 
Uh, just so you guys can see the burner. Let's throw that up here. Where is that thing? No, that's Roaring Top. That's, uh, there we go. KMRC guys. So check them out. They got them in dual format too. And, uh, oh, one more thing too. Um, if you guys take a look at the top here, I'll show you this real fast. You guys should be able to see this okay. Um, um, but these are universal. The, the board is universal. So it's got, you see an empty connector right here. So if you order a single, you get this board. If you order a double, a dual burner, you get the same board because it has a spare slot here for the second one. So it runs off the same board. Little status light to show you what's going on with it, if it's flashing or not, or it has different modes that you can you know, use to tell what status it's in. And then these unplug, so you can, it makes it easier to run your wires through your fuselage because you can pop this off. You don't have to run the whole, you don't have to run the whole board through. Now, here's a bonus for everybody. If you guys look at the, the, the screen um, right over here, okay? Third one down. They have the original burner on sale for 24 bucks or something like that. So, and that one, the wires don't come off, but it was their first version. It's a really nice burner. It doesn't have all these features, but for the money, it's, it's, it's pretty good. You know, it's, uh, it's a very nice uh, burner. So they have those on sort of a clearance price, so it's a good opportunity to get those. But I really love this full featured one. It's just so cool. And uh, I dig it. Uh, me and Gavin really love that purple color when it comes on. It just looks really great in the airplane. So, um, all right, guys, let me zoom out on that. Let me back away a little bit. Let's get rid of that. Let's uh, activate our uh, singularity there and go back to normal view here. And I'll unplug all of this stuff. So let me take a look at the chat log while we're kind of looking at stuff and see if anybody's got any questions about everything. Um, we got almost 50, we have more than 50 guys here. So I really want to thank everyone for coming. I do appreciate it. I know I've been gone a while and sometimes I disappear, but that's the life when you fly. You, you kind of sometimes got to go. So uh, um, we're going to put this aside right now. I'll stick this in the tray. So if I forget, that's where it is. And um, let's see, I'm going to put this, I'm going to actually disconnect this. And I'm going to put this back in here so I don't lose this. Let's put this back in place. All right, so servo tester's right there, ready to rock and roll. When we get on to other things, um, let me put this aside too. Yeah, I'll just stick that. Yeah, I'll put that in with that. So um, anybody got any questions on anything? Let's see. Um, so again, that burner, you can use it mostly on in-runners. But you can put it on an outrunner. It's designed to do that. You just got to run wires through. And I'm, like I said, I got to make a video of that. I'll, I'll have to do that and show everybody. I haven't actually done it yet, but I may put one in one of these. I don't. This is an in. Is this an in runner? Actually, this is. A, yeah, that's an in runner. Um, I have some outrunner or I, no? Yeah, that's an in runner. I have some that are outrunners. I may actually throw one in here one of these days, just to show it off to everybody or one of these uh, small jets that has an outrunner. But they can be rigged in there. So uh, let's see what we got. Um, uh, who, yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Eric B. said thanks. Um, yeah, like I said, we're going to have guys come out and fly. Don't worry about that. We'll just, well, we gotta, we got to get it set up first and, you know, figure out the cow situation because the cows are on there now. And we'll probably build a fence around the runway. So cow, that's how I used to always fly with cows on the, our properties that we had and stuff. So, um, all right, let's see. Somebody sent me a message. Let's see. Uh, let me just take a look at my phone. We got a call. I'm going to look here. This is not, not critical, but... Let me see if somebody sent me something. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, she might be. I'm being asked if she's up here. She may be. My cat is going through all my airplanes over there. She's running around somewhere. So I'm sure she's going to show up at some point or another. So, uh, all right, guys. A um, couple things about the Futura. Again, we put videos out on this. Comes in red. Green, yellow, it flies beautifully. I've only flown mine just like a couple of times. Fit and finish is outstanding on this thing. Um, they assemble real easy. It's a fixed gear jet, so you know, keep that in mind. Four cell, gear comes on and off real quick. Nine screws to assemble. You pop your nose cone on. You snap on your landing gear, it just pops into place. Two set screws, and you're done. That's it, you put a receiver in. Um, one of them I've been flying uh, non-stabilized. The other one, I did flo uh, float a reflex inside of it. And you guys can see this here. Just wondering if anybody has any Futura questions, just ask. Uh, these are avail available at, um, you know, um, 
FMS hobby, so I just stuck a reflex in this one. It's not required. A plane flies great without it, but I just wanted to fly one with stability in it, and I just put a very simple, um, you know, uh, six-channel receiver in there. You only need four channels. Um, really, five if you want, or actually six. You actually take that back. You really need the six, now that I'm thinking about it, if you want to be able to change the stabilization mode. So, otherwise, you really only need five. But you can see up close, nice finish, nice fit. These are my CG stickers. So, beautiful job on this whole thing. Again, check out the full unbox because it really goes into the detail of everything. Five screws. One, two, three, four, five. And then the four underneath right here. One, two, three, four. And the whole airplane is together. So, um, beautiful model. So, real nice. If you're looking for a fixed gear jet, be a nice entry-level jet. Flies fantastic with the flaps and stuff. So, flies inverted, does loops, rolls does knife edge, you name it, it does it. So, um, really, really nice model. So, does anybody have any Futura questions real quick? Because I just wanted to show that off. If we had time, we could even do another unbox because I got the green one right down here. So, and the red one, we've been flying both of these. So, um, uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, pick the chips up. I'm not sure what EQ means about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, setting four was the one that I like, blue first and orange. Yeah, that's from EQRC. Yeah, it's very nice. So Yaki over the guy. The, oh, Yaki's the guy that runs the, um, call him Mike, so, but he's the guy at KMRC. He's super cool. I met him at the Jet Jam a couple years back or whatever, so, um, and it's just a great product. I mean, like, for me, if it's easy to install and takes no time, um, that's like the biggest thing for me. But this one's inexpensive, has a lot of great features. It's feature packed. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, it, it just goes in with two zip ties. You know, you can use a little foam tack, which I do sometimes, but you really don't need all of that stuff. So that's the cool thing is it's very simple to put in. So, um, let's see. Sean Patter says, uh, Pilot Ryan says, sweet. Okay. All right. Sweet's the thing. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Tess flew my 64 millimeter Futura a couple weeks ago. This is my first EDF. Uh, uh, yeah, no trim needed and it flew fantastic. Yeah, it's a great flyer. Um, let's see, who just came in? Uh, Johnson 74 Squadron. Charlie Williams is in the house. Uh, yeah, really good. All right, cool. Let's see what we got. So let's see what we can get on to now. What do we got? We still got 50 guys in here. And again, I really appreciate everybody coming to the live show here. Let me see if I've gotten through what I wanted to get through real quick before we hit the big tamale here. Um, yeah, we talked about, in fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to run through these really, really fast. I know you guys want to get to the unboxing, and so do I. But I do want to show you guys a couple things here. Um, for those that, um, oh, where is that darn thing? Uh, oh, here it is, right here. That's what I was trying to do. I'm trying to throw the websites back on. There we go. Let's go back to here. So... Um, real fast, we saw KMRC on the screen. I'm just going to flip through these real fast, so check them out. Um, Motion RC, we're going to be showing you the camo F-16. That's going to be the next thing. I just tapped on it. So again, these are old pictures. They'll be getting news pictures on, on Motion RC site, you know, soon. Wesley's going to be taking pictures of it, I'm sure, and I may help him out with it, too. We'll see. Um, um, FMS, one of the things I want to get to right there, which we just talked about was the Futura. Comes in the three colors. There it is. So that's the 64. I do have links for all this stuff below. So if you guys want to support the channel, again, I usually prefer, I know a lot of guys get money for this stuff. I don't, I don't, I'd rather, you know, I, I have monetization, you know, activated, but I'd rather you guys buy yourself a plane. If you guys use my links down below for these, you guys, we get a little cut, we get a little commission for free. So it doesn't, I don't, I don't obviously don't need the money, but it's nice to it helps out with some of this stuff. So, um, but if you use our link, it supports the channel, guys. No cost to you. So that's the awesome part about it. So, um, but yeah, here's all the um, all the features on it. They go into all this stuff. So check that out at FMS. They also, I think they also have it at Fair RC. But anyway, here's the Blue Jay. Okay. Um, again, I was blown away at how well it flew right out of the box. And stay tuned because that video is coming. We literally just went to the field with it, filmed the whole thing as we took it out of the box right there at our runway and just put it together and flew it. So, um, yeah, really awesome model. So, um, um, and you can't beat that price, guys. Um, you know, you're looking at, what was it, 169 I think it said for the thing, uh, ready to fly. So, 
uh, and all you got to do is add your batteries, four, four double A's. So I can stand by that one. Like I said, I don't, you don't see many ready to flies on here. So, um, you know, and I, I was kind of impressed how nicely it flew. So it makes a very good first plane, beginner plane to train on and learn on and all that kind of stuff for a little, little cost. Um, Ernst RC contacted me a while ago and actually set me up with affiliates and stuff. So I use their stands for everything. These have been around since I think the 80s or 90s, okay? And it's all made the USA stuff. So these stands I use pretty much for everything. Um, every time I do an assembly or something, I'm, I'm constantly working with these. So they're all interchangeable. There's larger stands. You can put the larger stand thing in this. You can flip them around, turn them back and forth. So it's a great place to put parts. So I have an affiliate link with Ernst now. So if you guys want to buy anything directly from Ernst, made the USA, if you use my link, again, supports the channel. So, and that's official. We didn't have that before, but they were kind enough to give that to me, which was nice. And um, Hobby Zone, there's your arrows with stabilization, your uh, Avanti that flies beautifully. Um, we put that video out, so check it out. And um, let's see, what else we got? Amazon store. Yeah, we don't need to go on all that stuff. All right, let's get on to Motion RC. Let's get on to the F-16. Let me get this thing out of the box. We're going to be using our Ernst stand for that. And let's get rolling. Let me get all this stuff out of here. I got remote controls everywhere. And I'm excited. I really want to get into this thing. And uh, if you guys got some questions or anything, throw them at me while I start getting this thing out of the box. Let's see. Um, how's everyone today? Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's Johnson 74 Squadron. Yeah, the new future is cool, yeah. I personally, I, I like it. It's awesome. I like bigger planes. You know me. I like retractable gear, flaps. And in fact, you know, here's the thing. Let me do really quick, just for a comparison, since you're talking about Futura. Um, pound for pound, I think Futura is probably the nicest, you know, kind of 80 sport jet out there. You got the Avanti too. Man, this thing's heavy. Did I leave a battery in this thing? No, oh, huh, weird. I guess I've just gotten used to the 64 here lately. Um, but yeah, here you go. Let's put this, just do a quick side-by-side -side for everybody. You can kind of see the difference. Yeah, it's amazing how light and trim this one is compared to, but they're, they're pretty similar. You know, they're not, you know, if you put them right on top of each other, you kind of get an idea of the size difference. You know, one's retracts, one's fixed, one's 80 millimeter, one's, you know, um, 70, uh, 64 millimeter. So there's a diff big difference in the size and the class, four cell versus six cell. But the full featured one has gear, and everything, so um, pretty tough. I landed this one inverted, not intentionally. <laughs> Scraped it, tore all this stuff, ripped this, and it just repaired it, you know, it's no big deal. But there's your difference in your two, so. Um, the green one, for whatever reason, is only available at Fair RC. I got links for that below also, too, so, um, you know, this is a beautiful plane. Got the red one, um, have the blue one, have the original purple one, I mean, so, let me see if I can even get this back in here. Without this falling down, uh, these are being held up um, by my, um, my stands here, my racks, um, coming from Flying Tiger guys. So the Flying Tiger guy, um, made in the USA also. If you guys check out Flying Tiger, ah, uh, shoot, what did I just do to that? No, hang on a sec. Let me close something. I pushed a button wrong. Let me close this down. Close that, hang on one second, there we go. So Flying Tiger RC makes those racks, they're all made in the USA, they're awesome. So, you know, as I roll up here, I've had these up here for some time, all aluminum, adjustable. So if you guys want a good airplane rack on the wall, Flying Tiger, made in the USA. I like to promote the guys that do stuff in the USA as much as I can. Um, so uh, check those out there. So, all right, here we go. I need to put those, probably the new building, we're gonna probably outfit the new building maybe with all of these too, so that's gonna be pretty cool. Um, they're very adjustable and they look very good. So let's get on to the unboxing. All right, let's see what we got. Let me throw the chat log up here while we're doing this. So let's see. Um, also have no room for a single plane in my college apartment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you should see my house. <laughs> That's why I need to build my own building is because of all the house, all the stuff that's in my house. So they're all over the darn place. So um, I got to get them out and uh, rediscover the homeland here. So let's see. Uh, yeah, international shipping is a pain. 
Let's see, who else is here? Yeah, Keith, uh, is that Christie? Man, sometimes I can't see that stuff. Yeah, Keith Christie's here. And uh, do you have all the time, do you have an all time favorite plane or jet? Yes, there's one. If I could have only one airplane, I said it before and I'll say it again, it would be the FMS F7F Tiger Cat. If I could have one plane, if I had to get rid of all of them, that would be the plane I would keep because it just does everything well. It's not the fastest, but it's really powerful, has great gear, can fly on any surface, very aerobatic, twin engine fighter plane. It's cool. It's got the best landing gear I've seen on anything. So FMS F7F Tiger Cat. I asked FMS to make that a long, long time ago. They didn't do, wouldn't do it. And then finally they, yeah, we're going to do it. And they were like, oh yeah, you're right. You know, build it and then people will buy it. So let's see, can I get this? Uh, oh no. Someone took the straw out of my cup. We'll have to do it the manual way. All right, like the scale. Birds for more being over 27. Actually, and if you want another twin that's outstanding, I got to admit the, uh, the Motion RC uh, B25 is killer. I want to do more videos of that. We've only done a couple, so I've only done that one I put out, but we'll do more here coming up. All right, let's, let's get this out of here, guys. You ready to rock? Let's get this out of the box. We're going to start cutting this thing open. So I know it says V2 again, but this is a V3. Um, this is the latest and greatest coming from Motion RC. And stay tuned because um, we're going to have a lot more coming from them. Just because Wesley's flying out there now, um, he's going to hand me over some of the new stuff that's coming. So you'll get to see it here really early, which is kind of nice um, uh, to get new stuff like that that you know, is not available yet. So we'll be showing you a lot of that here. So just like this. So, all right. Uh, let's see. Let's slide this out. Let's see if we can get it to kind of slide a little bit. There we go. All right. Uh, get a piece of this. Let's pull this out. Oh, it's the unveiling here. All right. There's already a sparf pole falling out. I'm going to take it out. <laughs> Try not to lose this stuff. Um, okay, Wesley threw a receiver in there for me, he said. So um, that's like an older 10 channel we'll, I'll use for that. So, um, all right, so we'll pull this out. See if I can get this in a way where you guys can maybe better view it. So here we go, drum roll. All right, here we go. Pull this out and out of here. Um, also, guys, you know, like I said, on this channel, on RC Informer, we do a little bit of everything. You know, I've been doing probably FMS stuff maybe the longest, I guess, and the most in the past, you know. Still do lots of FMS, still work with them and things. But um, um, for those of you that maybe don't know, um, just a long time ago when Motion RC first started, and they only had two employees there, which were the owners. Um, I was the guy making their videos to start with before anybody else was. So so I've been had a kind of been doing stuff with Motion on and off over the last decade. So you know, occasionally they'll call me and say, hey, you want to do this? You want to do that? Or, you know, can we do this? Or, or you know, are you interested in this? Or um, they've offered me jobs before. So, you know, I'm usually too busy to do it. Maybe in the future something like that could happen. But, you know, the Motion RC guys I work on and off with over the last decade. So, um, and again, I was their first, uh, their first videographer there, sort of. So, um, so it's really nothing new that I've been doing Motion RC stuff. So, um, yeah, this is cool. Uh, let's see, 878 millimeter wingspan, 1300 length, 1300 millimeter. Um, yeah, this this will be cool. Let's get this out of here. This is some different cardboard too. This is um, it's like a thinner grade, but um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, all right, let's get this down here. I'm just gonna throw this into my pit of boxes. There we go. And that's what we got there, folks. That's the uh, inside. There's the instructions right here. You can see brand new. Um, I think Wesley showed it on his show there the other day on motion. And I think he just, uh, you know, let me center this a little bit. Um, he had, um, yeah, that's the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. Um, he had um, he had just pulled this out, the fuselage, to show everybody a little bit. But then he popped it back in, sort of. But never really did a full kind of, kind of, kind of, a, you know, assembly or anything. Just, just to show it to you guys. So, so let's get this out of here officially. And let's see what we got. 57 guys here. That's awesome. You guys rule for coming and checking this out. Um, 
I called Wesley yesterday or sent him a message and said, hey, what are we doing flying-wise this week or whatever? He's like, well, it's going to be all windy this week, but probably tomorrow or the next day. So that's why I'm doing the unboxing for you guys today so we can get this out of here and, um, and get it flying for everybody. So this is a set of plastic parts. I guess these are hinges. That's weird. Uh, not sure why that's there. Let me see for a second. Um, I don't know if these are spare hinges or what. That's kind of weird. Here, take a look. Um, go to the top view here. Yeah, these are like, uh, let me get over to here so you guys can see here. Um, yeah, these are like, uh, it's like a bag of hinges. I don't think you got to do any hinges with the hinging with this. So um, um, I think the last free wing I plane I did was either the F-14 or it was the F-4 Phantom or the Starfighter. So I've done a lot of free wing stuff, just not one recently. This is their newest, latest and greatest. But this looks like some hinges and pins. Maybe this is just some spares or something because I don't know if you need that for any of this stuff. So, um, but here, let's, uh, let's pan out with the upper view. You guys can kind of see this coming out of the box. I'll try to do a combo of different, different views here. So we'll just get all this out of here and go. Let me, uh, let me grab myself uh, scissors. Got some scissors here to get this out with. So let's pull these, pull these out. I'll try and do this as speedily as we can. And we'll check out the quality of this. So really nice. Nice, uh, it's foam hinge all the way around. Um, probably laminated too, I'm assuming, but they look like a solid hinge. It's foam. Um, and nice, uh, nice horn with screw pass-through. So that's cool. And uh, nice detail on the wing. Looks like a probe of some sort or light goes in there, probably a probe. Let's see, and then wing tip, uh, we glue the missiles on. Single servo, plastic uh, fittings. So that's nice servo connection there. Missile uh, rail there. And looks like that's our spar tube. So, so there's a wing for you. So we'll, we'll start putting these, piling these things over here. Grab our, uh, our vertical here. That's real nice. So first time out of the box for this thing. So let me, uh, let me cut this off and out of here. All right, let's see, who do we got here? EQRC, yeah, hinges. I'm watching what EQ's writing there. Uh, the blue one was the only one available in South Africa. What are you talking about? The blue FMS would love to pick up one of the silver ones. Um, have the blue version. Uh, I, missed, I missed what you guys were talking about. Thunderbird, okay. Let's see, there's our vertical. That's nice. It looks like it's got, this is cool. It's got a little piece. Here, I'll zoom in so you guys can see. Let me go uh, grab that remote. We're going to get right in on that for everybody. Um, see right here, it's got, right up here, it's got a uh, carbon spar right in there to keep this from bending and breaking off. You know, when you push this, when you're transporting the plane, and you bump this into something, you don't break it off. So that's kind of nice. Um, real good detail on that thing. Uh, let me go to the top view real quick. You guys can check it out closer. I'll zoom a bit for everybody. Let's see. Nice uh, plastic doubler. Is this plastic on the front or is that? No, that's foam up front. But this is a plastic doubler here. There's our connection for our rudder. Vertical stab and rudder, foam hinge around. Laminated, it looks tough. Always tug these and check them. Sometimes you'll see a little cracking here, but that's the paint. Just make sure, make sure it's the paint, make sure it's not the foam. Uh, nice horn in there, screwed on the, in on the backside. Very nice and flush, so nice quality there. I do see a little bit of beads in this. Um, but not bad. The other one wasn't, the wing wasn't that way, but just a few. Uh, but, you know, and then again, you get some of that. What I really like, folks, is that the decals are applied, okay? <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to put all these. I guess this is Alaska uh, National Guard, I think, in the camo. Um, yeah, that's right. Alaska, it's, it's got a picture of Alaska on it. So that must be, <laughs> must be what it is. So, yeah, AK for Alaska, and there you go. So you're all set. So, uh, what does that say? Uh, yeah, it says, uh, yeah, Pacific Air Forces. So, yeah, very cool. So, uh, very nice. I love it when the stickers are applied, decals are applied, and I don't have to do it. Because sometimes decals take, like, a long, long time to put on. So, we'll get another wing out. Let's get this going. Du -du -du. I'm trying to read some questions and things as we go along. If anybody wants me to show, if you guys got requests, I am doing requests here. If you guys want to see some stuff. Same thing here, check your hinge. Make sure it looks good. Again, I'll zoom in that for everybody. Let me pan up a little bit with this because I don't have, let me go, that was down. 
That's the wrong way. Here, let's go like this. That way I can zoom for everybody. There you go. So you guys can see up close what that all looks like. So very nice detail, you know, all the way around. Nice panel lines. There's your missile rail, spar jig. Um, let's flip it around here. You guys can see all of the details there. Very nice. Very nice. So very, very nice fit and finish overall. So yeah, super, super nice. So there's a bunch of 70 millimeter F-16s out there. I think this one's gonna end up being one of the better ones for sure, so um, we'll see. Nice hinge, always check that, make sure it's good. If you have any hinge problems, you either contact, you know, Motion RC customer support and, or just throw some foam tack on it. You know, I'll usually line that with some foam tack if I'm having, uh, you know, any problems with it. So let's put that aside. Let me get our zoom going here. And then let's get uh, some more foam blocks out. They have it really nicely. Um, I need to zip back here. They have it pretty nicely packaged, you know, all in plastic with these little formers. Real nice nose cones right here. Let's see what they got going on there. That looks like that's uh, got plastic on the end of it. It looks like the pedo sticks in there. And it looks like it's magnetic, just fits on the front. So pretty basic nose cone, but very nice, nicely manufactured. No problems with that. Put that to the side there too. I'll put that inside my urn stand. And then here this is, let's see what's in the top here. This is, there we go. Here's our, uh, here's our first of the real, I guess, big changes to this plane is a uh, full flying tail. And uh, there they are, magically, full flying stab. So there we go. Very cool. You can see the, the nice doubler, make sure that's glued in. It looks like it is. Looks like a, you, know, you have a shaft going through there with a, with a uh, uh, wheel collar set screw arrangement. Um, that hole right there is a pin hole where they stick a thing in there. That's where they paint it from. So they, they use that as a stick to hold it while they do the painting on this thing. So, but there you go, man, full flying tail. It's all ready to go. Let's see the other half. So there it is. No more elevator horizontal stab. Full flying tail now. Ball link's in there all together. So let's take a look. Uh, always inspect that stuff, the little details, make sure everything's good. So there's our, there's our ball link. Actually, I went too far. Back that out a little bit. So, um, yeah, there you go. All screwed in. Make sure the screw's going all the way through. But uh, there we go. Yeah, nice quality. Everything's looking good so far. So far, so good. And uh, let's see what we got. Let's go back to our regular, regular view. I'm going to put these to the side, top of the wings there. What else do we have here? This is, uh, this looks like the missile rails for the wings, I think. So let's pull those out. You guys can see what those look like. I'll switch the top view, I'll slide those out. Ooh, those are plastic. The whole thing is plastic coated, look at that. It's got some foam in the middle, but it looks like you glue it in right here. But that whole thing's plastic, so you're not gonna really, you're not gonna really wreck that if you scrape it on something, so. Um, but nice, yeah, and that's where your missile, wing missile slides on, so both of those are super nice and really mostly plastic. I mean, it's like full, filled with foam, but yeah, real nice, so. <coughs> we'll stick those aside. <coughs> yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to take a two-second break here. Um, throw some questions at me if you got them. Got 54 guys here, so I want to thank everybody again for coming to hang with me here while we do this. Let me see. Um, what do we got? Uh, free wing, hinges, someone's saying. We still got excellent connections, so let me know you guys are still out there. And we will continue. Actually, I've got to uh, blow my nose here real quick while we get into this. We'll get the fuselage out. <laughs> 56 guys here. Outstanding. Still getting a good mic signal. Uh, got an ex excellent signal strength. All right, what else we got? There's orifices all over this darn thing. So let me pull these out. There's stuff all in this box. Like I said before, and I'll say it again. Don't throw your box out, okay, until you finish the plane, okay, because sometimes they can hide some stuff that you threw out and go, oh, man, I think there was a bag of screws in there or something. So keep your box till the plane is done, okay. So what do we got here? Oh, here we go. This is, um, I know what these are. Okay, so we got, these are your two tail uh, pieces that go on either side of the, the engines, the, or the engine, I should say. And um, these are actually like a split like a split speed brake on both sides. It doesn't split obviously on the model here. I've seen guys 3D print some stuff like that, but, um, but these just glue onto the back. So there's two of these. 
I'll just pull those out and we'll, we may or may not glue them on in this session, but, um, but yeah, these just, I think it's, uh, I think that's the top and that's the top. I think that's, uh, no, that's the top. Oh, one's, yeah. So you look at the shape of them right there. They sit like that. So that's, I'll be looking at it from the back. So the engine's right in the center of that. So those, again, those split open, they open up like this and they create drag. So, uh, but it's a scale detail, so we'll glue that on later. I'll put these down over here with the rest of the stuff. And then these are ventral fins and the uh, nose cone and some other two pieces of something. So let's see, is it labeled? Um, yeah, actually it says right here. Oh yeah, wing fence, uh, wing knife. No, that's not a wing fence. Uh, what does it say? Oh, pedo tube. It says wing fence and wing knife. I'm not sure what the heck. These are ventral fins. I'm not sure what that's talking about, but yeah, these are ventral fins. I'll leave these in the box for right now. These just screw onto the underside um, with a couple of screws. Um, I don't know what these are. These might go in the wing. I think these are that, there's a hole in the front of the wing. I think that's where it goes. And that's a pedo tube for the nose cone. So I'll leave this in the bag just so, just so we don't, um, don't, we don't lose that. Throw that over there. And let's see, moment of truth. There's another insert right here. This holds the nose and this is some great boxing. We got some good, uh, Good stuff holding this in place. So here we go, guys. Fuselage is coming out. I think Wes showed you this the other day. Oh, wait a minute, hang on a sec. There's more stuff in here. Hang on, before I do this, there's, uh, hang on. Uh, yep, there's a little tube of glue. And here's another, another bag of stuff. So, um, and there's some push rods or some, uh, yeah, there's some rods, some uh, linkages, some, uh, some your typical you know, free wing ball links. These are your two, uh, those are the wheel collars for, the, uh, uh, for the, uh, the axles for the flying tail. These are the flying tail axles, shafts, whatever you want to call them. Bag of screws right here. I'll leave this in the bag for now. And then a little bit of a shelf liner to help your battery from slipping. I wonder where they got that idea from. So <laughs> anyway, uh, must've been watching my videos. So uh, anyway, hardware package, put that aside again. And then here we are onto the fuselage. Again, some contact cement they gave us with it. And uh, I'll use foam tack probably though. I don't know, I might use that stuff. But here we go guys, fuselage coming out here. Let's get this, uh, get this on out. We'll pull this out. This is uh, really, really nice. I did see the little clip on Wesley show this to everybody. Nice tinted canopy, so that's sporty. Um, let me just check in the box. I don't see anything in there. So we're gonna get that kind of right there. Beautiful, that was perfect. And then we'll, we'll bring in the urnt stand here. Put that down. <clears throat> and uh, let me get this, uh, get this on the way. Or slide that a little bit, yep. Just got this thing. That spar I got in the beginning obviously was a wing spar. So let's get that up there. So let's rise, get our table up there. Sweet. I know, I wonder if Gavin's watching this. Gavin is an F-16 junkie. So um, I'm surprised my phone's not ringing right now, but he also did discover cars and girls and stuff, so, so he's doomed for right now. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, this is it, guys. Very, very nice. My first time seeing it. Um, some things that stand out to me right away is that I really like, let me see if I can show you this. I really like, if you look right there at the tail, I like that metal fitting right there. Hey, that's your, that's where your shaft for your uh, flying tail goes. It's metal, which is nice. So you got a metal on metal there. So that should be very, very smooth. I don't think those are bearings, but it's very nice. A um, couple other things that stand out to me are these alignment fins. I don't know what you call those, but they're really cool. Your, your whole vertical stabilizer just slides right on top of that. And that lines it up. So you got a good plastic to plastic, you know, contact with that. So, um, and that's, that's very sharp. Let me see if I can put next to it, you know, what, um, what that looks like. You can see there's how that fits in right there. It's got uh, plastic to plastic. Let's see if I can line that up right there. Those go fit right in. So you got a nice plastic to plastic fitting. That's very slick. So makes for a positive contact there. Um, I like the tail cone. Tail cone's pretty nice. Um, and it's all white. Look at that all white down in there so what that means is your afterburner is going to light up really nicely with that white so um, it looks to me like I see no screws in there so 
So we're going to be using the zip ties on the afterburner for this, for sure. So no big deal. That's what it's meant for. Um, Motion RC also has its own afterburner set, too, which is apparently nice. So very inexpensive. So, uh, you know, check that out, too. But look at the detail on that. Going back, look at the panel lines. Really nice. Very slick. Decals applied. Yay, look at that. Uh, 90. Very cool. Let's check out those decals. What does that say? Uh, I don't know what that says. It's in Russian, so that's weird. Uh, anyway, 90 is the, let's see, we've got uh, plastic fittings here for our wings. I don't know if those are, I think those are self-tapping screws. Yeah, that's one thing I'd love to see change, but not a big deal because you're probably not going to take the wings off this plane. Um, it'd be nice to see a, a machine screw in there, but not a big deal because, <coughs> you know, with this airplane, it's 70 millimeters, small enough airplane that you're probably not going to be disassembling this too much. And you don't want to be disassembling, you know, um, self-tapping screws that go into plastic. Okay. So that's a little bit antiquated there, but again, as long as you're not removing the wings, you're not, it's no big deal. So, um, you just want machine screws for something that you're going to be taking you know, on and off a whole lot. So, um, but there's our spar slot right through the middle there. Our uh, aileron connection, which will pop out of there in a second. And let's see, what else stands out to me that I like? Um, let's see, we got our tail servos here. We've got a simulated tail hook. Nice intake cheater hole louver. These are your attachment points for your ventral fins. So, that's the pain about F-16s, ventral fins, trying to transport this on its belly, next to impossible. So, um, but they do unscrew. If you got an urn stand or a stand of some sort, no problem. Or put a big block under here that's tall enough, big foam block or something, then you won't hurt your ventral fins. But there's our new compression gear. So we're going to extend that and get that all out of there. And then um, here's, our, uh, here's our landing gear, our nose gear. That looks nice. That's compression also too. And this is glued on. No doors, but that's okay. It's 70 millimeter. Nice plastic inlet. Very cool. I like that. Very detailed. Yeah, cool. So let's see. We'll get this up on the stand here. We'll flip back to our front view. It looks like the regular urn stand is like perfect for this thing. It seems like it cradles the fuselage well. Yeah, without damaging anything. So that's a good, this is a good combo here, the urn stand with this. Urn stand is not perfect for everything, so you know, but for this, it's a, it, it, it cradles pretty well and doesn't really seem to damage anything, especially like your leading edge extensions, which is what these are. Um, if I would love to see an improvement <coughs> on this plane, it's a very small thing, but a lot of newer planes nowadays are doing plastic, but plastic's expensive. But instead of having a thin foam edge here, having one that is, um, let me slide that forward, one that has plastic around. This one doesn't have plastic. But that's okay, just be careful with this edge. Just be critical because you can ding that real easy. It's not, it's not a plastic edge. You might be able to run tape around that or something like that. And uh, let's see. Uh, okay, everybody's all still here. I got millions of thumbs up I just noticed there. Thanks for checking on that, guys. Uh, let's see. Still here, beautiful F-16, super dust. Uh, yeah, me and Wes are going to get out and fly the crap out of these things. This is going to be fun. So, but yeah, I'd love to see. Just be careful with these edges. You can really really ding these up. I'm almost thinking of soaking these with CA or something or putting some tape along that edge or maybe running something along there. But you just got to be careful because you can damage that, that pretty easily. And take a look at the other side. Uh, same kind of thing. You just want to be careful with that because you can, can ding that. So um, plastic parts are expensive. So whenever, whenever they can, folks, they try to get away from using so many plastic parts because the plastic molds are real expensive. So here, let me, uh, let me back off on the zoom. Let me go back to that top view so you guys can see the canopy on this deal. And uh, let's see what we got. Um, get into the top. Nice latch. Nice positive latch. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Tongue and groove. Nice manufactured canopy. Screwed in pilot. And uh, yeah, cool. Nice tinted window. Yeah, that's sporty. And then our interior here. Let's take a look at that. This is um, just a blue box. You can wire through the blue box or go direct on certain things. It's up to you. It looks like the receiver's meant to go all the way up front. So that's pretty nice. And um, here's our battery area. Interesting battery area. Usually you see a wood floor, but this is a... <coughs> looks like there's a tray here. So 
it looks like what it has is, it looks like it's got four screws, two here and then two right down there, and they're meant to be moved from here to here to here to here. So, uh, good idea. The idea of that is, is that you have, you can slide your battery forward and back depending on how you want to fly with your CG. So, if you want a forward CG for stability and, and speed, set it up to the front. If you want it set up for high alpha, you know, and, um, and CG farther aft, put it on this back setting. So you can do all that high alpha flying and all that kind of stuff. Just a quick look down the, the middle there. Here, let me, uh, let me switch cameras because I can probably do that better actually through here. Let's see if I can, I can line that up. You can see down the fuselage there um, where all that stuff goes. You got to be careful of uh, the fuselage not sucking things in Go back there to the fan maybe. So, but pretty clean, pretty clean canopy area and, and battery area right there. So nice and, uh, yeah, nice and sharp. Um, the wiring looks good. It looks like everything's labeled decently right here. Here, let me go back to the, let me go back to that top view real fast. And uh, let's see real fast what we got here. Here's your uh, throttle line. Looks like that's got your reverse line on it. So if you're coming in hot and you need to hit the brakes, you know, that's what you're going to use is a, uh, an extra channel for reversing. So let's see how that looks right there. So yeah, that's your extra reverse wire. So throttle, reverse wire attached to it. And then right here, landing gear, rudder, elevator, aileron. So um, those are all in there to get plugged in. So very, very cool the way that uh, that all is set up to go in there. So um, let's see, let me look in here and that all goes through the box. Is that a, is that a blue box or is that a a stabilization. I don't know what that is. I think that's just a blue box. I think that's just a junction box. I'm not sure. But either or, we'll get this whole thing set up. We'll kind of see. Let me see if I can get a little closer there for you guys. So what I'm going to do, since I'm noticing that there's a landing gear wire, I'm going to drop the uh, I'm going to drop the gear on this thing. So let's do this. Let's take. Let me switch to this mode again here. This view. And uh, let's see who we got in the house still here. Take a quick look. Um, we click on this page. There we go. Um, wow, 55 guys here. I appreciate it. Uh, really, thanks for everybody, guys, for uh, for coming and checking this out. So um, it's nice to see a lot of people here. Uh, it's just a big Y harness. Yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. <coughs> yeah, I like this livery only too. I like the multiple color. Gray fighter planes are awesome, man. If you don't want to be seen, but when you're flying RC. You kind of want to see the plane, and when it's in especially a gray sky, a gray-only airplane is more challenging to see. So, you know, I like the camo with the, with the white, and the, especially when you get older, your eyesight's not as sharp, not as good. So having white, black, and gray, it stands out a little easier to see, and plus it's a little bit different, so a uh, different thing to look at. So, um, all right, let's see what we got. Let me get the gear down. I'm going to grab my... I'm going to grab my, my handy-dandy tester here. I'm going to plug that baby in. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, should I do that first or not? Well, what the heck. Let's just do it. We can always put it back up, right? Um, let's see how it works first shot, first time out here. Uh, let's flip it around. Let's go like this. And let's see how we, uh, how we do. That's it. <laughs> Can't, can't complain about that. It worked really nicely first time out. So we'll, uh, we'll get a little zoom in on there. Let's see what we got. Center on that. About center there. There we go. Manipulating. I got so many buttons. I need like a whole flight deck panel here. I got, <laughs> one day I'll figure out how to do this streamline. If only it was voice controlled. If it was voice controlled, I'd be all set. So um, here we go. Let's zoom in. Let you guys see the gear. Let's take a look at that nose strut. That's very nice. So let me get us a little lower here. Yeah, very cool gear, lots of E-rings. Guys, throw a drop of foam tack on there. My guys at foam tack are very cool. Um, and, and here's where, check it out, here's where you mess up your um, leading edge extensions. When you're finagling the plane like this, right here where this thing is hitting, this is where you can ding up your leading extensions without knowing that you're doing it. So just kind of be careful. I just caught myself doing it. So. Be real careful manipulating the plane, especially with these, because there's no plastic on those. So, um, foam tack, baby. This is where I will always put a glob of foam tack on each E-ring, okay, just to keep them in place. Here, 
here, here, here. Uh, made in the USA, beacon adhesives, baby. This is the stuff. So these guys have been supporting me for like a decade. They give me glue to give to you guys when I go to events and stuff. And we'll be giving away a lot at the field too. So, so foam tack, beacon adhesives, made in the USA, best stuff to use <coughs> on foam for sure for, for certain applications. So nice spinning wheel. But here's your compression, guys. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on that. Yeah, real nice. Yeah, lots of compression there. That's going to be nice. That's going to work very, very well. Let's take a look at the main gear. Take a look at those. Yeah, so compression gear on a 70 millimeter F16. So very, very cool. Yeah, you got to like that. So um, the wheel well is pretty nice. Looks like that's, oops, I'm going to knock over that Futura there. Uh, here, I tell you what, let me switch to the other view. We'll go to that so you guys can see that right up close. There we go. You can see in there, there's our steering servo. They left you a little notch right there to stick an Allen wrench to adjust your set screw. So really, really cool stuff. And uh, let's see, let's cycle that for everybody. Very cool. There's the mains coming in and out. Let's back off on the zoom just a hair. Let's go back this way. And we'll get those out again, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Very, very nice. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm impressed. It's nice when it works first time, kind of right out of the box. Um, and you don't have to fiddle with anything. So um, often I'll, I'll do this kind of thing. I'll get the gear out right away. I'll unplug it. And that way we can actually even just put it down on the table if we want to. But, but um, that way I, I don't have to worry about, you know, it's sitting on the belly or something or, or whatever. So, but yeah, we got it right on the table. But let me unplug all that. If we have to put it back up to get the wings on and stuff. We'll, uh, we'll do that. So let me put this back in so I don't lose that. Put my tester away. All right, what do you guys think? Pretty slick, huh? Very, very nice. We'll raise that up. Yeah, I like the way, uh, man, I like the way that went together. So let's get this, uh, hey, let's do this. Let's pop this down. You know, and this is cool too. I, I kind of like how they did the battery bay that you can adjust the, you know, you can adjust the battery floor. But as I zoom in one more time, what I like too that I'm noticing here is they ran this piece of plastic here. Probably it's just on there with, um, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, contact cement or something. So you can peel it off, get the wires. But they ran the wires back there, which is cool. Same thing on that side. So the wires are out of your way for the battery. I like that. That was a good planning uh, to do all that without having to. Usually there's exposed wires, you're running your battery, but just that little piece of plastic is a good help. And in fact, in the future, you know, you can use some scrap Lexan, you know, to do that kind of thing. So, um, so here, let's do this. Let's put the easy stuff on first. Um, and then we'll probably pop some of that off. It looks like on the back here, there's a piece of wood. Um, shoot, piece of wood. <laughs> Sorry, wrong camera. There we go. A little piece of wood back there. You can see where the pin locks into at the top. So let me put this all down in here. You drop that into place. There that is. Um, <coughs> where did I put that nose cone at? Oh, here, right here. That's where I put it. So let's see the magnet. Yeah, magnetic right on there. So, and I could take my parts. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I normally do. When I'm building something, in most cases, is you have an empty tray with your urn stand here, which is I love these urn stands. I take the whole bag of parts and I put them in there. Ernst also has organizer trays and stuff, but I throw all that in there. And that way I don't have to worry about where everything has gone. So this is real quick. You guys have probably seen these on the free wing planes. They started putting these in planes a while back. So again, this is just shelf liner, sticky shelf liner. So if you don't like using Velcro on your batteries, you just put this down. It keeps your battery from sliding around. The straps will hold it down tight enough. But you can see down here in the urn stand, I got all my linkages, rods, horns, and hopefully nothing's gonna go, you know, go away. It'll all stay in there. And then um, here, I'm gonna grab my, uh, these are my, uh, my ventral fins and my speed brakes on the tail. I think that's it for the main parts. I'm gonna put this here. So what we could do is I could take this out real fast. Let me see, I'm gonna cut the scissors here. I'm gonna take these parts, throw them in here too. Okay, just get everything out. I don't need all that in there. Let's see. And then here's our, our nose cone here. Uh, our nose cone, our pitot tube, I should say. And that has a flat edge on it, flat spot, so flat side. So that only goes in one way. Um, it's supposed to go in one way. So let's see how that goes. 
Yeah, that'll slide in there. That goes in there pretty tight. So it's a little flexible, but you can see that that just goes right on the nose, right there, magnetic. So um, now I'm not going to maneuver the plane around like that. I'm going to um, <laughs> I'm going to take this off for now and just stick it over here because I'll knock that into something and break it off or something. So, but let's do this. Let's start off with probably the easiest thing, which is actually the ta flying tail. We'll get that on first. So I'm going to flip this like this. Let's see. And I have not been looking at the instructions and I'll pull those out if I have to. Um, but let me get rid of some of those. All right, let's see. Uh, what do we got? Who's in the house? We got, uh, let me take a look down here. We got uh, uh, Nabbit here. Looks like a great beginner jet. Yeah, right. Uh, no lights on the 70 millimeter. Let's see. Yeah, hit the like button. Mark Adkins, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, yeah, Wes is uh, chiming in at Motion RC there. And uh, Boss223 is in the house. Yeah, Wesley's watching on. Um, uh, are there any improvements to the nose gear of the V2? I don't know. This is the V3, so I don't, I don't know what the V2 was like. So, but it's great compression. So um, it's not quite scale of what an F-16 is. F-16 just has a straight, you know, thing, but this one actually has a scissor assembly in the front, but it has compression. So guys, you probably, uh, me just looking at this, I, I think this will operate fine off of, uh, you know, low cut grass, I think, because the, the wheels look big enough, they look, the gear looks tough enough. I don't think there'll be any issues. You're probably better off on a hard surface, but I think this will probably handle grass like okay. So, um, I'm going to jump into, I am going to jump into the instructions for just a second because I do want to see real fast, um, rather than just totally blowing off everything. Um, let me go, uh, let me zoom out a bit for everybody. I just personally want to take a quick look at the tail section of this. So, um, you can see there's all the parts. Um, wait, there's no missiles in this thing. I thought there were missiles with this thing. All right, whatever. I don't like putting missiles on planes anyway because it slows the thing down. So, um... Messels might be a separate kit with this or something. Maybe Wes will chime in on that. Uh, Messels may be a separate, uh, separate purchase or something. I know they, they, they part this stuff out. Because um, I think this airplane's pretty inexpensive. And in fact, um, here, let me go, uh, let me throw that up here while we're looking at this. Let me throw Motion RC up there, uh, the website, real quick. And uh, let me see if I can sort of figure that out. This is $295, guys. That's a good price on that thing. Not bad. Um, Aggressor, Arctic, Camo. So I'm betting the missiles are a separate, uh, separate deal. So, but here, you can see the features of it right here. We'll look at that real quick. You guys can see what, that, what it shows about this thing. So um, it looks like there's, um, looks like there's, yeah, horizontal stabilizer is a full flying tail, new hardware, updated ball links. So I guess the old one didn't have ball links in it. Uh, let's see, new main wing uh, weapon mount system. Uh, no more glue on rails. Uh, let's see, vertical stab now uses screws to assemble. Uh, improved nose gear landing mount. A new 80 amp uh, ESC with thrust reversing. So there's your new features that you can check out right there on the, on the thing. So, and what I'm going to do is I just want to look at this part right here. This is what I want to see before I just assemble this. It looks like we're going to stick. In fact, let me get rid of uh, the website there. Uh, let me touch that. There we go. Get rid of that. I just want to see this part real fast. Um, just so I can kind of guide my, the rest of the airplane is pretty simple, but it looks like all we're going to do is uh, stick this shaft in here and put these two, two screws in here, three by 10 millimeter. Uh, and then once we got the, oh, we're going to put it in, oh, you, they want you to put it in, uh, which way did they want you to do it first? Um, oh, step one, insert the rotating shaft into the fixed hole. So we're going to put this in first, then our wheel collar. Then step two, which is weird. I don't know why they didn't flip-flop. It's kind of bizarre how they did that. They put step one on the right side. But anyway, whatever. We're going to do this first, install this first, step one. Then we're going to go back here, and we're going to install the whole thing, which has these nice little, this is cool. It's got these nice little uh, indentations. It's got these nice uh, detents uh, in the shaft to put that in. So, so we'll get it in the stab first. So let's do that. Let's grab the stabilizers. Let's see if I can lower the table as low as I can get it so we can zoom in on the tail with the upper camera here. And uh, let me grab down in here some of these. I'm gonna take all the screws now. Let me get back, I'll get to our top view now once again here. Let's see, I'll pan out on that a little bit, show you what we did. I pulled all the screws out. And again, so you don't lose anything. This is why, this is why I love my Ernst stand. It's just for this reason. So I'm gonna cut this open, drop those in the Ernst stand, 
I'm gonna cut this open, drop those in the urn stand. I love my urn stand. I'm gonna plug it one more time, guys, or I'm gonna keep plugging it. Um, this stand is awesome, like I said, and I got affiliate links below, so if you guys buy one of these through Ernst, it really helps out. You can actually get them through Horizon through my link too and all that, I think, and, and other places. I don't know, Motion may even have, I don't know who, I don't know. But anyway, Ernst is a really cool company, again, made in the USA. Uh, they've been cool because when I go to events and things, they give me airplane, or they give me stamps to bring to everything. So um, um, it's really cool that they, they do that. I'm not on the clock with them or anything. They're just, you know, a made in the USA company that's, you know, pretty cool. So, so here, let's take this right here. And there's no flat on the end of that, but this is aluminum, so I guess it wouldn't, shouldn't matter. So let me grab real quick the flying tails here, which are right here. And we'll start off, we'll just do both of them here at the same time. This is just gonna fit right in there. It looks like that fits pretty nice. It's got a nice spin to it. Um, there's no play at all. That's very nice, nice fit. So let me grab one of these collars, which is this right here. Um, and then there's also a tiny screw. Okay, and I'm gonna get, get the zoom in there for everybody. Let's see how we can get with this. Get right in on that. I'm just gonna put that on there. You could probably do a little thread lock, but I'm not gonna bother. In fact, after the fact, <clears throat> I'm probably going to drop, believe it or not, a little foam tack on the edge of that once we get it tightened, and that'll help keep it in place. And then you can just peel that off when you have to remove it or something. But I'm just going to screw this in and get it kind of started in there. Okay, pretty simple. And, um, and in fact, I can do that to both of them. Let me grab that. Let me grab this one. Let me grab, where is that one in there? I know it's not lost because I dumped it. My urn stand. I think this is a I think this is a two millimeter metric, I think. Might be one and a half, but heck, I'm not really sure. Let me get that started as best I can. So, so I got both collars set up and ready to go. So I can put one there. Um, I can put one here. Here, I'll put them where we can see them. Okay, and then we'll get the flying tail. We'll start with this one right here. Let me slide this a little bit so it doesn't fall off the table. But uh, here, let me slide the plane forward a little more. Yeah, so this is gonna go right in there. Pretty simple. So, so let's take uh, let's take the other shaft. Let's put this one in. Let's see how this one fits. Oh, very very smooth. Very nice. So I like that. You want that to be free and clear as best as possible. So I'm going to pull this. I'm just going to drop that wheel collar right there. Pop this out. See if I can get that to go in there. There we go. See, and it goes all the way through. Just make sure it goes all the way through there. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a very light. Let me grab. Uh, hang on a sec. Actually, that zoom is about right. Let me really quick grab a tool out of here. I got my radio case with my stuff in here. So I'm going to grab my one and a half metric because I think that's what we use here. Let me go back to this. <coughs> and what I'm going to do, just so this doesn't get lost, I'm just going to do a little bit of a, right on the edge, just a little, little tight. Not, not enough that it, just enough that it doesn't come off, but you don't want to dig it in there because you want to plant that in place just yet. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and put this in here. Let's see if that'll fit. I think Wesley said he had a little hard time getting that in there. So tell you what, let's back that out. I think this is what he was telling me about here a second ago. Let me unscrew that. One more, let me pull this out. He said it was a little bit bird going in here, like it didn't fit that well or it was a little tight. Oh, no, not a big deal. Yeah, it goes in. So, all right, so it has a tight fit. There's no reason to really, I don't think there's any reason to sand it out. It just fits in kind of tight. So... What I would do is, is get that in there, and you can see actually, I'll show you this. It's actually sticking out of this side. I just lost that wheel, dropped that wheel collar. Um, you can see it's sticking out right here. See that? You don't need to go that far, but just back it off a little bit. And then what I would do is sight down these two screws. <coughs> Let's do this. So I am going to do it a little backwards from the way the instructions uh, said to do it. So I'm just going to sight down in there and see where those, where those gaps line up which it looks like they're probably right kind of in here somewhere. As you pull it through and push it through, you can see where that, that gap stops. And then find where that gap is, which I just found it. And then I'm going to take a couple screws and stick those down in there. So I think this is saying to use, what is it talking to use here? This is saying to use right here, it says use screw that is aligned. And that, is that a self-tapping screw that they're putting in there? That's, that's kind of questionable. I'm just looking at that to see which screw. Usually it's better to have like a flat-headed screw or something like that. Um, 
Let me see. It says to put, yeah, it says a KA three by 10. And I believe a KA three by 10 is a, is not a machine screw, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a self tapping. Interesting. I guess that's how that's supposed to go. But let me look through the screws real quick. I'm going to back off the zoom here. I'm going to take a look at these screws because they're all pointy tip screws. And I, I guess that's what they want you to use, which is kind of bizarre. Usually you got like a machine type screw going in there. So that's interesting. So, hmm. Very strange, very strange. I almost wonder if I could put a machine in there instead that might be flatter. So, because I like to have a flat edge, you know, instead of have a pointy tip there, because all the screws are the same, I think. So, but I don't know if I like that pointy edge on there. I guess I could file that edge down. And, uh, but let's see, let me put, um, let me just take a look down in here. Sorry guys. I'm just looking down here at the screws to make sure that there's nothing else going on. And I don't think there is. I think that's what it is. It's meant to have those. Uh, let's see. Parts. Yeah, they're all K, 3 by 10 K. So they're, they're all the same screws. I guess it's really meant to have a, a self-tap in there. So again, which I'm not really thrilled about. It'll hold it in there, no problem at all. Um, but I'd like to see a flatter head screw on there instead of... Uh, you know, like a machine type screw, but the threads won't hold as well going into plastic. So I think what we're going to do for right now is I think we're going to put these in there. If anybody wants to comment on this, feel free. Let's see what people are saying. We still got 50 guys here. Um, let's see, one and a half. Uh, you guys got any comments on these screws? Um, I'm going to probably just pop these things in there, but I just want to see what... Uh, what you guys thought of that. It looks like they're all the same screw. So, um, but what I can probably do later is, like I said, take the tip of the screw right here, probably, I'm thinking, and kind of sand that down a little bit. You can see right here, just sand it flat so you have a flat edge going in there because you don't need that point to go through that hole. The hole's already, it's already a fairly big hole. So, um, but yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Usually I don't see self-taps in those. You'll see something a little flatter going in there. But it is plastic going in there. So um, Wes says uh, two millimeter countersunk screws for this part. Uh, okay, let's see. I don't see those in here, Wes. <laughs> Wes is observing what he's doing. So I may hold off putting those screws in there. I think I could assemble this entire thing though without doing those screws right now so because I'll get a little clarification on that I might mess with that so what I'm going to do for now because I don't need to do that so I'm not doing something wrong is what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this whole thing here's what I'm going to do I'm going to take this back out because it's a tight enough fit in there that for now I don't need the screw I can actually get the whole thing assembled um, let me tighten this one more time I'm just going to get this on here kind of loosely Let's see, just a little bit. You see, I'm just putting that on not real tight. And then we're going to take this whole thing, slide it right in there. And I think I can complete the airplane without putting those screws in just yet, because I might do that later. Because I'd like to see a flatter head screw. It's a nice, nice assembly there without really doing much, you know, to this. That's really it. So um, probably when I do the flight demo, me and Wesley will talk about those two screws, because um, I'm not sure what's intended to be there other than those self-tapping. So it's kind of weird, but... You know, you gotta, you gotta, this is what's bothered me a little about that is that you've got, and I'll show you right here. You guys will get what I'm talking about here. Um, usually you have a flat head type screw going into there, something, or a flat tip screw, like a machine screw. It seems weird to have a self tap going up against, against this, if you guys can see that. My camera's still wobbling a bit. Let me see if I can stabilize that. But you see that going in there, and I'm not seeing a screw. It's saying use this screw, but yeah, we'll see. Um, uh, Enzo, $4.99, thanks. <laughs> Enzo K is in the house. Donated uh, five bucks, I appreciate that. That's awesome. You guys don't have to do that. Uh, remember, if you guys, uh, you know, buy a plane or, a, you know, something through my link, you know, we get a little, little bit out of that, you know, a little bit of money out of that. So, and that doesn't cost you guys a dime. So I prefer you guys, you know, thanks for doing that, but keep your, keep your money and get yourself a cool plane and just use my link when you guys buy something. So, 
Um, okay, let's get this uh, let's get this in place. That's that's really it for this, guys. You don't have to do much more to this. This is your there's your flying tail. It's all on there, just except for the screw. So, like I said, probably during the flying video, I'll talk about that after I put the screws in there. It does look like that's what it's showing, but you see, even this, look at the picture. The picture is showing right here. Um, it might be a self-tap screw, but you see it's showing like a, a flat tip on it, not a pointy tip. And I'm looking for two screws in there that actually is a flat tip, and I'm not seeing any in there. So um, let me take another look. I'm going to thumb through all these again. Yeah, I'm not seeing any flat tip type screw. I'm seeing all identical screws in there. So, um, yeah, I'm going to skip that and come back. And like I said, during the flight demos that me and Wes are going to do probably with these things, you know, I'll, I'll clarify and talk about what screw we used for that because uh, it should be flat. But otherwise, anyway, other than that, let me get the, let me get the other side on real fast because it, it has enough, uh, it, it's, it's in there solid enough that I can finish the assembly without having to totally bolt those things down. And, um, and we'll talk about, like I said, during the flight demo, we'll mention all of that. Um, I'm not sure exactly where to put these, but we're just going to put them in there. So we've got a couple of these. Let's look at the length. Let me go back to here. I just grabbed, uh, I just grabbed these out of here. So let me get those in the center. I'm going to zoom in for everybody right there. So I'm going to put these, and you can put them where you want. For right now, I'm going to stick them on the outer hole, just assuming we're going to fly with an FCG and do all kinds of high alpha type stuff. That's probably where you would put it because you'd want, want the most kind of throw for that kind of thing. Um, and then I'm going to put the ball link on there. I'm going to go back into my toolbox here. And let me grab, if you guys don't have one of these, get one, ball link pliers. That way you don't damage your links when you're popping stuff on and off. I'm going to put that right in there. I'll do it from the side so you all can see. Pop that into place. There we go. Let's try to get that in there. Let's see if I can get that. Ugh, it's not letting me do it from there. Let's try it that way. There we go. So there we go. There's our, uh, there's our flying tail setup for that side. And I'm just going to do the same for the other. So um, let's take this, slide this right into place. We're going to take our wheel collar, pop it down in there. Um, let me see if I can back this out just a little bit. Okay, put that down all the way in there. Yep, it's going into place. Just going to tighten this just a hair. Not super, super tight because I want to leave some space. For, uh, I wanted to leave a little bit of play in there for now. I'm going to take this second one. Let me kind of move this uh, tray around so you all can be observant of it. So I'll zoom right in there. Same deal here. This is a very tight fit. So it'll hold it in there for the purposes of, you know, this video at least. So pop that into place and then I'll grab that linkage, which is right here. Stick it on the outer hole and let's roll that down in there and we'll pop this linkage into place. Turn this a bit, pop that in there, grab our ball link and snap that into place. So that's about probably the toughest or most challenging or the most assembly you're going to do on this thing. And I'll adjust it and get it all later. But that's, that's really it, guys. Again, without the screws, it's solid enough just to hold it in there for the purposes of just getting the airplane together. And I'll talk about, like I said, I'll talk about those tail screws, those four, when we do the flight demo or, you know, um, I just don't want to pop those in just yet. So these are our tail pieces. These are our, our pieces that are going to glue right into place. Those might be able to stay in place too. Um, these are going to glue in right there. And those actually pop out as speed brakes on the full scale airplane. So as I flip this around, those are probably going to be easy to lose. But you can see this one side's black, one side's, uh, one side's gray. So I'm going to go to back to our regular view. You guys can see how that tail went on. Very simple, very simple. Just question mark on the screws there, that's all. But you can see the anhedral of that and how they, they you know, dip down. And we'll trim it and tune it later for all that stuff. So, um, and that's really it, guys. That's your, that's your uh, flying tails on this thing. So let's get the vertical on. And let's see if anybody, Wes says this. Here, they are the same screws other than the one with the collar and the elevator. Okay, so yes, yeah, should be a flat tip, though. EQRC, yeah, you agree with me. So I may you 
very well use those screws, but I'm going to at least file the tip down and make it flat. So it'll self-tap into the plastic with some deep threads. It'll hold in there, but it'll be a flat on a flat. So and I'll, I don't want to do it right now because I don't, you know, I'll probably have to go to the grinder and kind of just sort of sand thing and get it pretty, pretty flat. So, um, but not a big deal for, for doing that. So uh, here, so you have the correct screw that uh, tighten it up uh, and let her, uh, let her, uh, let her rip tater chip. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, so we'll see. Like I said, I'll, uh, that's probably what I'm gonna do. So for now, I'm gonna reach down into here, and I'm gonna pull out, which I think they put. I'm not sure what they did with that. I think this is your rudder right here. Did they stick that? Yeah, that's what they did. This is interesting how they did this. I'm gonna show you all this. Um, I was wondering what that was for. It almost looked like a a tail light or something that it was going back to. But um, you see here at the top. They put, we're going to put the rudder, vertical stabilizer on. This looked like it was plugged into something, but that's actually just sort of a little storage area to pop your, uh, your rudder connection. So, um, in fact, I'll slide this tail on down here so you guys can see all this. Let's slide this on down. And all we're going to do is make the connection there. Put this on. This is a quick build, folks. This is nothing, like no big deal. Um, I think, let's see if that fits on tight. That fits on tight enough. If it felt loose... I would go in with my hobby knife and tighten that up, but I don't think we need to. Um, let's get that in place and then just line up your plastic right here. And you can see I'm just going to push this here and push it straight down. Very nice fit. Let's see if we can get the front in there. Front seems to go in real nice. Let's get that. Slide that down into position. Yeah, there we go. Very good. Very clean. Check that out. It just glove tight. Just finish fit right in there. So see how nice that is. Get a little bit of that, a little double manipulation of the automation there. There it is. See, that fit in perfectly. Just slid right in. Plastic to plastic joints. So you got to like that. That's very, very nice how that fits in. So now I'm going to take these self-tappings here. And this looks like this uses like a two millimeter metric here. And this is a plastic, you know, self-tap screw or a, or a, a, a self-tap screw that goes into plastic. Let me grab my other driver here, my two millimeter metric, and I'm gonna come right around here and we'll get that in place. That'll lock right in nice. It should go in there flat. Looks like it's tapping in there good or well or nicely. And then let me get one more. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, for that elevator, we'll, we're gonna use uses the same screws, but we're gonna wanna flatten them. I'm going to use a grinder or something to flatten the tip. So we got a flat tip going in there. So um, let me see if I can do that. It's always with the wrong hand the way I got to show this. <laughs> let me turn it. Let me turn it around this way. There you go. You guys can probably see that a little better at least. So that's just going right in. Very nice. And it goes flush. It mounts flush. Got to kind of ruin the decal a little bit to get that on there. But it goes right in flat. So very cool. Beveled. Self-tapping screw, very nice. So let me flip this around to this side. I'll get that in nicely. Let's go with that. So, yeah, let's do this. Let's take, uh, take the next one, put that right in here. There it is. Try to angle it so you all can see better. Let's get that in there. Very cool. Nice fit. Nice fit. There we go. Let's get one more on there. Yeah, all the screws are the same for this plane, so that's pretty cool. Again, this one's a little buried there. Gonna have to bite into that decal a little bit, but no big deal. There we go. Very cool. All right. Fits nice and flush. Don't over tighten it because the plastic threads will tear up, but just go in so this is flush. And there we go, guys. That, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, back out on the zoom. You guys can see that. So, yeah, see, it's starting to come together. We got the whole tail done. Pretty, pretty cakewalk here. Yeah, pretty, pretty easy stuff. So um, let's slap the ventral fins on while I'm here. This is where it starts to get harder to transport and move around with those ventral fins. But I tell you what, this urn stand is ideal. It fits. Let's see if this fits on. Yeah. This fits on a nice way where it supports here. 
It actually supports the plane here without dinging anything. Um, is it biting into that corner a little bit? No, not really. It's fitting in there nice, and it's not getting the rudder under here. This is where you want to watch out here. It's not, not dinging your rudder, but no, it's a perfect fit. Very nice. So I'm going to put these on. Let's get uh, this one here. That one's uh, they're nice and straight, so that's good. Let's take this, grab my tool. I'll zoom you all in here. Let's see, we'll get right in on that. Uh, it's almost in a perfect place. So let's see, we'll get right there. Man, if only I had a thought controlled. And let's see if I can get that a little higher. There we go, the camera should zoom on that, hopefully. Zoom in on that. Here, let me give you something to focus on. Right there, there we go. So I'm gonna do this from the inside, actually, I think is how that goes. So actually, let me do the other one first. So I'm gonna put this here. I think that goes from the inside, if I'm not mistaken. Or does that go from the outside? You know what? Let me consult with the instructions. Let's see what that says. Because it could go either way. I don't know the intent of it, so let me just look real fast. Let's see here. Let's see here. Ventral fins, ventral fins. It says nothing about them. No, they should be here somewhere. Yeah, it really doesn't say, does it? No, that's not, not really complete, is it? Yeah, let's see. Let's go back to here. Ventral, ventral. It really doesn't say, does it? I guess you could put them on how you want to, but you probably need to go from the other side. Yeah, the more I think about it, I guess it's supposed to screw into the plastic if I was going to take a guess. So I'm going to take a stab at that. Let me see if I can find which one I want to put where. So we are actually going to do it that way. So this one I'm probably going to stick here. This one I'm probably going to stick here. So yeah, let's take, let's take what we got and we'll go, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to go from here out. So I don't think it's supposed to go through, yeah. Uh, this is my best guess. So guys, if I got this wrong, you know, go, hey Rich, you put that damn thing in wrong. So I'm pretty sure that this is how it was meant to go on. So if I got it wrong, sue me. Flat side is fly. Yeah, no, I know that. I just was like, which way does the screw go? And it's obviously, yeah, it's supposed to go in this way. And it sticks out the other side, yeah. I figured that was it. You could even bevel the edge and all that sort of thing. So I would have loved to have seen these things like removable or magnetic or something instead of, you know, a screw in like this. But at least you can remove them. So um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I just pulled that out of there, didn't I? Go the other way. There we go. Yeah, and you can tighten those up pretty nice. So this will give the plane some good um, uh, longitudinal stability. Basically, act like a rudder, sorta. Of. Just give it some more stability, yaw stability. So there we go. So that's it. That's what you're gonna see. So I'll do the other one probably. Let's see. I'll do that on the other camera. Let's try that. Um, let's go with there. Here we got this. We'll take. Uh, Grab another screw, and let's see. This is going to go here. I'm going to throw this one on this side. There we go. You can even start that through if you want. Get that tip in there. See if I can angle it just a bit, and you all can see how that goes right on in there. Very nice. And you can see here the screw tips that do stick out a little bit right here from the other one. But I'm just going to put these in, let them screw in place. Get one more, one more here. <coughs> here we go, real easy. Just a couple screws. Cakewalk. There we go. Excellent. So, but yeah, at least, like I said, at least you can take them off if you had to transport it. But, you know, if you had to transport this, um, probably your best transporting it on a stand of some sort, like this one. Um, but, um, but for the most part, um, if you have to, actually you can transport it with the landing gear down if you have to, that's probably easiest. Um, but if you don't want to do that, put it up, put a big foam block here underneath and then just sit the plane down on top of that and let the ventral fins like hang off the back side. So that's it for that part, folks. It's all we got to do now is just slap the wings on and I don't have any decals to put on, which is sweet. 
So, all right, let's see. Uh, let's see, uh, guys, give me a thumbs up if y'all are still in the house. If you're still watching, just want to see that you guys are still, I'm still showing a good signal and still showing good audio. I just want to make sure we hadn't dropped out on any signal or anything. So, um, let's see. Uh, let me pull uh, this away. I'm going to go, if you guys can see this. All I'm going to do is reach into the wing panel because I'm going to put the wing on next. I'm going to pop out the wing connector, okay, right there. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm just going to reach right over here. You can find it there. And I'm just going to pop that out so it's nicely tucked in there. That should come out okay. So, yep, there we go. That's in place. <coughs> and then we're going to take our wing spar. We're going to stick that right through. Slide that in. If it's having a hard time going in, you can sand the edges. But, you know, you guys can see here from the top view, I just slid that right in, and that's it. So we'll grab our wing panels. We'll put on one at a time. So here we go. I'll just take this, line it up. Okay. Okay, we'll slide that in. There we go. I'll make the uh, connection here. Pop that in place. It feels like it's going in pretty tight. So, again, if that's loose... You know, tighten your connections. Okay, got lots of thumbs ups. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. And uh, I know a lot of guys also, too, will uh, be in their workshop working and just throw this video on, and that's cool. I appreciate that. That's good that you... Thanks for coming and just watching and doing that. Yeah, it's nice. Um, but, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, okay, so we're going to slide that right in. Just make sure... It looks like the best way is to S-turn this because there's a plastic fitting up there that doesn't let it go kind of all the way through. So if you just S-turn that thing, stick it in there sort of, and then just slide that right in. Just make sure you're not pinching it. And uh, that should go kind of right in. I'm going to flip the plane upside down so I can look in there as I'm doing that. It looks like uh, it's not pinching, and that's what you want to look for. Just make sure it goes in there without squeezing or damaging anything. Yep, and that's it. So now we got two exposed holes right there. Since I got those open, I'm just going to go ahead and throw the screw right in there and start tightening it. All self-tapping into plastic, folks. But again, remember, it's 70 millimeters, a small jet. There's no real reason why you would really need to disassemble much of this airplane because it'll fit probably in almost any car. So um, it's always a preference to have metal threads, but, um, but that's for really a big plane. Um, it, this, this is... Having plastic uh, parts with self-tapping screws is what keeps costs down on planes like this. So not having to put those metal threads in there. But again, again, you don't need them. If, if, you're, if you've got a plane that's small enough that you don't need to disassemble, um, you know, you're pretty much good to go. So that's it for the wing. Just make sure it goes in there. Don't over tighten it because again, you can strip it. It's only going into plastic, but they're very deep threads. So, but nice fit. Nice fit, nice finish all the way around. Let's look at the other side, top side. And yeah, you can see that nice joint right there. Very slick, very clean, very nice. We'll do the same to the other side. I'll just flip it around since I've got it like this. And again, right here is where you can ding up your leading edge extensions, right here is on the edge of this thing when you're tilting it and stuff. I'm showing it on the camera and seeing I'm trying not to do that to this. I might've done a little ding in there, but but not a big deal. I might, like I said, I might run some tape or something along this, or I might even glue a piece of thin Lexan or something on here to keep that edge, you know, tight or whatever. But yeah, that can ding really, really easily. But other than that, you know, <coughs> no big deal. We're going to take the other wing, slide that one on, and we're going to put this in place. Let's slide that in, make our joint, nice locking tabs. And again, I'm going to do sort of an, an S-turn deal. Actually, was that meant to go... I wonder if that was meant to go straight in. Maybe that was meant to slide straight in. I don't know. Maybe that... Oh, it's got a catch. Oh, I get it. Duh. Okay. I just noticed that. Um, I don't know that we need... Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to S-turn it. It is it's a little plastic catch mechanism keeper, keeper thingamajig in here. But I think that's just to hold the wire. I guess you could pop your wire in there, but... You know, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, you know, it does go straight back in there, I guess. So, all right, however you want. <laughs> I changed my mind. It can go straight back in there. You don't need to S-turn it. So it will go straight back in there. Just make sure that while you're doing this, you're getting your wire into that slot. It's fitting down in there, which you can see it is. As long as it feeds in there, 
you're solid, you're good to go. So just get that, get that right down in there. Looks like that's fitting. Yeah, it's going in there nice. I'm just eyeballing it. There we go, pop it into place. And that's it. Grab our remaining, you know, self-tap screws. Drop one in there. Drop one in there. And let's get those in place. Two millimeter metric on these for the driver. Pretty slick. Uh, and that's it. We're going to get the rod horn linkage on. I'm going to take this. I'm not going to put this one on the farthest out hole. I'm going to put it on the second one, innermost. Um, <coughs> and in fact, you know what? I think I'm going to do it from the inside. Let me look and see. I like the fact they're using Z-Bends on this thing. Um, I love Z-Bends. I know Motion uses those plastic keepers, but I'd rather steer clear of those when I can. Not that I've had one fail or anything, I just would prefer to, to have the Z-Bend because it will not fail, pretty much. So, all right, so let's get, let me, let, me pull, let me unscrew this one a little bit. All right, let's get this in place and grab our pair of pliers right here, ball link pliers. Get yourself some. They're the best for ball links, for popping on, popping off, that kind of thing. So, all right, so that's in place. Just gonna flip it to the other side. I tell you what, this thing is going together so easy and so simply, and it's very easy to film and very easy to deal with um, with the Ernst stand here. So it's a very nice combo here. So, all right, so we have that out. I'm just gonna slide this Z band in. Again, I'm just using the second to outer hole um, just for now, just to get it into a place, just to have a, a fixed data point there. Let's get that locked in. And let's pop that in. Um, and I think that's like it for the assembly of this thing, folks. I think, I think we're pretty much, uh, I think we're pretty much done with this. Let me, uh, let me see if I can get this, uh, get us straightened on this deal. And uh, let's pull the, uh, let's pull the stand. And I have, oh, I got a rudder link. I forgot one thing. Let me, let's do this. Let me flip it around. There we go. See if those uh, ventral fins start getting in the way of the stand. Let's see, I can probably put it, yeah. Yeah, right there, that's actually perfect. Yeah, I can, I can honestly say that Ernst stand fits most planes, but not every plane perfectly, you know? But it fits this one perfectly, it really does. Um, it's a real nice, uh, real nice setup there. So let me zoom, uh, okay, well, let's do this. Let me go into, uh, okay, I'm gonna have to wreck that decal, that kinda sucks, but oh well. Here, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let me turn this around. Smack in my upper camera. Here, let's go show you all this. Here we go. I just got to get that link on, so you guys will see what I'm talking about here in a second. So here we go. We're just going to zoom right in. They, uh, they, put the, uh, they put the servo right up. Oh, no, I got to go down. They put the servo right where the AK sticker is, I think, so... Let me get this down a little bit. You all see that. No big deal. No factor. So, but I've got to put a linkage on there. So I'm going to step up on the table here. And let me see. I got to, I'm going to have to puncture this and get this out of here. So that eh, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So, and there's the horn. I'll, I can do that more nicely. Let me get a hobby knife here. Uh, grab a hobby knife, which is in here. Let me grab that. Uh, there it is. Let's see. Kind of tears the sticker up there, doesn't it? Uh, let's try to take. Let's try to take a hobby knife, and at least find the channel, which it looks like it's right there. Try and cut it in a nice way, at least. It's kind of hard to see where the hole is, but I'm trying to cut it so it's not totally butchered or anything, because it's a. This is all a white and black and a clear sort of sticker. I'm trying to do it nicely if I can. It doesn't look like total caca when I pull that off of there. Yep, this is the part that sucks about. Sucks about having servo holes and there's a decal right there. So it's hard to see where that's at exactly. 
There we go. That's at least sort of cleaner. I can clean that up a little better later, but anyway, just to get the sticker out of there or the decal out. And then let me reach in there, grab this, see what I'm, pull that servo out. Doesn't seem to want to come out of there. Let's try, uh, I'm on the top side of the plane here. I'm going to try and pull it out with this. There we go. So there's our horn right there. And then uh, we'll pop this into place. So you can put this on however you like. I am probably going to do one of these from the underside. So I'll go on the farthest out hole. Let's try that. We'll get that. That looks like a pretty good spot right there. And uh, yeah, if you use a hobby knife, you can at least clean that up a little so you're not totally wrecking the, the decal there. Try to at least make it clean. But when you got a white on black decal like that, if you don't cut it nicely, it's going to look really horrible in there. At least we got it kind of reasonable. Um, at least you don't tear into the part that's actually stuck to the, uh, to the fuselage there. So, all right, let's see. Let's back out on the zoom. We'll go wide. And you guys can see it. And that is it. Um, I, th I think we're done. I think it's done. Actually, the only other thing is these missile rails. These are going to go right... I don't know if there's a top and a bottom to that. Let me see if I can get those to... I like the fact they made these plastic, though. Holy smokes. Let's see if I can get that on. I don't know that there's a top or a bottom. I don't know if it's side-specific or not. I don't see a right or left on it. So here, let's try to just pop those in place. They might just slide in. Yeah, there we go. And I'll glue them later. Just don't want to glue them right this second just to spare the, spare the time here. And uh, yeah, they actually fit pretty glove tight on there. So, so that's really about all you need to, need to do with that. So let me uh, get us centered there. And uh, I think that's it, except for one more piece. This is all pulling up here, so that's not cool. All right, except for the nose cone. And it looks like they gave us these, which I'll show you up here, two little little black pegs. And I think what that's for is the leading edge of the wing. So let's see if I can zoom on that for everybody. Let's see if I can go telephoto. Oops. Yep, just lost a missile rail. <laughs> Love those missile rails. I'll pop that back on. I think what that's intended for is right here. There's a little spot you guys can see. Let me get us into a bank. I think that this is for the leading edge. I don't know what this is. Maybe it's some sort of pitot tube or something. I think that's supposed to go in there. I could be wrong, and you guys can maybe tell me if you know what that is. But it looks like it's some sort of pitot tube of some sort, or some kind of probe of some sort. I really, I really don't know what it is. So, you guys got any idea what that thing is? Because I just, I just put it right in there, as you can see right there in the center of the screen right there. So it's kind of like a little probe sticking out, like a pedo. There's one in each wing. So and I think that's it. I think that's all we got to this thing, folks. Let me see if I can get this over here. Get this down. Let me zoom out. And I think we're done with this, guys. That's it. All we need is a receiver, 6S battery, and we're ready to rock and roll. And uh, Wesley and I will be out there probably tomorrow actually flying this thing. So um, easy assembly. Like I said, the only issue I had really was just the, you know, those, uh, those tail screws. I'm not a little kind of not sure, but I think you use the same screws. But I'm going to flatten the tip of them. I'll shave them down with a grinder or something. But, um, but that's about it. So here, let's do this. Let's lose the stand because we don't need it anymore. I can grab the gear. And uh, let me put this uh, stand back here. And I think I'm going to throw the burner in this because I want to see what the darn burner looks like. Let me take a battery. I have a four cell sitting here because obviously we need some weight up front here. I'm just going to toss this in there just so it stays down. Very nice. Yeah, I like it. Very cool, guys. That is it. Let me raise, uh, raise it on up. I got my own, my own lift. But cool, what do you think, guys? That's pretty sweet, huh? Um, very nice jet. Very easy to stick together.
So who else we got? Boss223 came in. Uh, Jason Rebel came in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fitzy2, I think is what I'm reading there. And uh, But very nice. Uh, I'm, I'm into this. It's very cool. Went together well. Still got 42 some odd guys here. But I think I'm going to throw the KM burner in this next. I think we're going to do it right now. Unless you guys got some place you got to be. I'm going to throw that burner in. I want to see what that thing looks like in this thing. But very slick jet. Very easy to assemble. Um, yeah, no problem at all with this thing. I mean, it really went in nice. Uh, <coughs> yeah, very impressive. Very slick. Very smooth. Very easy to assemble. Um, just that little issue with the tail. Let's check out the suspension. It's got suspension. So that's good. No suspension. So yeah, 70 mil F-16 now with compression struts. So I like it. Very, very cool. Very nice. It, this has a little bit, too. It's interesting how it is, too. Um, I don't know what the original one was like, but if you see, it's got, it's got a little bit of a plus. Sorry, this way. <laughs> it's got a little positive deck angle on it. It still has the forward rake to the gear, even though the nose gear is not super scale or anything. Um, but it's got a plus deck angle, so this should, this should rotate easy. It should rotate and lift off very easy. Yeah, it's very light. Well, honestly, I don't have anything. I don't have a full-size battery in there, but... Um, but yeah, guys, questions, man. Throw them at me if you guys got them. Let's see. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, Air Hammers in the house. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, cool jet, man. I like it. I'm digging this. Um, um, I really love the paint job on this. I really like this thing. Yeah, it's very slick. Big cheater hole underneath. Yeah, look at that. Look at that from underside. It's a good size plane for a 70 millimeter. It really is pretty good size. Uh, yeah, cool. Oh, there goes my wingtip uh, rail again. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop this off. I'm going to take this one off too. And let's see if I can throw the burner in real quick. Let's see how it goes in. Um, how do I get that tail off? Okay, so let's do this. Let's take, it would have been easier for me to put that in ahead of time, but I wanted to get it built first. Um, usually it would have been smarter to stick that afterburner in there, but I think we can do this pretty easily. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I am probably going to, I might be able to get away with here. Let's do this. Let's lower this. I want to get that burner in because I want to light that thing. I want to light the candle here. Um, let's do this. I'm going to bring the urn stand back. Let's see, what time do we have right here? 4.14, so not too bad. Let's do this. Let me throw this on. Let me flip this. Or, oh, no, hang on. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> the battery. Battery, Aziz! Did you guys see True Lies when he was filming the terrorist monologue and the <laughs> battery dies in the middle of the monologue, you know? <laughs> He's like, what? Battery! Battery, Aziz! All right, so, anyway, uh, here, let's get, uh, let's get this down here. And let's see, yeah, we're probably going to have to pull all this off. <laughs> all that stuff I just put on, I probably got to take off. Okay, that's fine, because the hatch, the hatch goes, yeah, I'm pretty sure. So let's do this. Let me grab a screwdriver. Um, yeah, it probably would have been better me to think ahead and do that ahead of time, but that's all right. There's a couple screws here. Let's drop this all the way down. Let's go back to our top view. Okay. I'm going to zoom in here. Am I going to knock anything off if I do that? No, I'm not. You slide all this forward. We're going to go right into the belly of the beast here. Let's uh, zoom this in. Uh, no, that's out. It's the opposite of in. But these are Phillips. So I'm going to pop that out. So here we go. This is an example. If you guys bought your KM RC models afterburner right here, and you were going to install it in your plane, this is what you would have to do. So this will be a good, good example of that. We're going to take this and unscrew. You can see right there. Sorry, my hand was in the way there. Let's see if I can get that sort of semi-magnetic out of there. Same thing with this one. I'm probably going to have to pull those ventral fins off. And let me take those screws, throw them, guess where, into the urn stand. There we go. All right. And then I think that hatch won't come off until I pull the fins off. So, yeah. Um, so let's do that real quick. See how, how quick this is to do. Do it all together. Got one there. All right, we're 
gonna pull that off. I'm gonna actually leave those in there is what I'm gonna do. So, and it looks like as I screwed these in, that as you tightened it, everything got beveled. You notice that? So we got a nice beveled edge there. So I think that, that's intentional. So, and that's a good thing. See how they go flush there? So, so we'll pull that one off. I'll unscrew this one as well. Let's get that out of there. Get this one out of there. Okay, let's go. Uh, pull this one off. There we go. Again, I'm gonna leave the screws in because I don't want to lose them or take them off, so I keep them in the same place because that goes on and off real easy. And then we'll pop our fan hatch off. There we go. Freewing model, it says, right on it. And <coughs> let's see. Oh, there's our 80-millimeter speed control, so we'll be able to see that too. Let's see. Let me grab my, uh, my larger screwdriver here. And you guys can see the fan in there. That's a nice fan. That's a nice motor too. 2210 kV motor. Look at that thing. That's a beast. That's going to be interesting to see how that goes down. So let's see. We'll pop that out. Pop that one out. Pop that one out. Pop this one out. And guess what I'm going to do with those? I'm going to put those in the urn stand so I don't lose them. <laughs> so, all right. So let's see if we can yank this out of here. See what's going on down there. Uh, probably removing the rudder would be an easier way to do this, but you know what? I don't think I need to. What I'm gonna do is grab my go get em wire. Okay, I'm just gonna stick this right down in there. I did prepare in advance. I did stick back here one of my go get em wires. So let's see, this is that. Okay, so, and I bent the edge of it because I was doing something else with it. Let me straighten that thing out. And then, let's see, let's get that straight. And then I'm going to take, you know, I might be able to just go through, I tell you what, I'm going to pull the canopy off. I tell you, this is well suited for this plane. I tell you, this urn stand is absolute perfection for this airplane. It does, it's not in my way for anything. It stays on there the whole time. So <coughs> I'm going to pull the fan out right here, which I think you guys can probably see from that top view there. And I'm going to put, oh yeah, this is nice. So I can show you guys this, but down through here, there's a big plastic Lexan piece of, uh, well, like a Lexan keeping the wires in place. And I can actually see perfectly through there. So I'm going to actually go through, I'm going to back away here. I'm actually going to go through the tailpipe right here with this wire. I'm going to go down through here. I don't know if you can see the wire right there. See it right there moving? Uh, here. Zoom in, you all can see that. It's going to come right through here. I'm going to go under the speed controller and see if I can get that to go, not in the speed controller, under the speed controller. And actually, looking down this way, I can see it clear down in there where that thing is. So, and it's going all the way into the front. So, oh, easy, easy install on this. Easy install. So, and then there's our go get them wire just standing right there waiting to be pulled in. So, I'll take our KMRC burner here. This is it, guys, right here. Here we go. Okay, and what I'm going to do to make my life easy, this is what's great about this thing, is you can unclip this from the board right off. So now I don't have to run that whole board through the fuselage. All I have to do is run this. So I'll grab this. I'll just kind of stick my go get em wire thingamajig there. Let me pop that through. Here, I'll zoom in. You guys can see a little better what I'm doing. But yeah, this is why they designed the this thing this way was so that you didn't have to run the whole board through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that down in there. I'm going to reach to the front of the plane. Okay. And you'll see that with this view, I'm just going to reach under here. That wire should be in there somewhere, um, even without seeing it. Yeah. Okay. There it is. And I'm just going to pull that through. So now I have the wire up front. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me lower this. Oh, no, that's the wrong way. I've got to get those buttons straight. So right under here, I got the wire. I'm going to start pulling on that. And as I pull on that through the front, I can just yank it all the way through. So you see how nicely that feeds in there. Very smooth. This goes all the way through. I like it. It's not snagging on anything, I don't think. And that's it. Once I get it through, 
I can uh, just keep pulling it. Let me, yeah, I'm just having a little issue there. No, not a big deal. Uh, let's see, I just need to grab my finger. There we go. You guys can see on the top, that comes right through. And then now all we gotta do is secure this thing to the back. I just, I did a little out of order, but it's not a big deal. So I'm gonna grab myself two zip ties, which uh, here, let's see. Where did I put my zip tie? Oh, here they are. Zip ties are right here. Grab those out of my KMRC bag. I guess I got three in this one, but don't really need them. So I'll throw my zip tie there. So let's strap this on. We're gonna put this right on the back end of this motor. I'm gonna see if I can slide the speed controller a little farther out of here. Yep, it's coming out. Actually, that's nice. I might be able to show you that too. Here, here's your 80 amp. Here's your 80 amp ESC. Give you guys a little view of that. There it is. 80 amp, baby, right in there. And it slides under, you see, it has a really nice plastic holder there with two screws holding it in place. So, so that's pretty slick. Um, so let me roll this, let me just pop this right down. Um, yeah, this Ernst stand is perfect for this thing, I'm telling you, because it, it doesn't, the rudder doesn't even hit the table either. So it's like the perfect, even the perfect height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this in such a way that I'm gonna put this here. I do, I'm just trying to maneuver this so I can get to this a little easier to show you guys. Oh, well, let's see, I'll just do, oh, you know, I'll do it this way. That'll work. I'm just gonna run this. I'm gonna figure out um, some opposing holes here. Figure out what would be the best way to do this without blocking the cooling holes. So it's probably gonna go, I'm not gonna have an actual perfect place to put this, but I'll have a close enough. Let's see, how can I do that in such a way where, let's see if I can get this I might be able to put one through here. Let me try this first. Try to stick it next to this wire. I don't know if it'll go in there or not, but I'm gonna try it. I think it will. Let's see here. I'm just looking down into that thing. And let's try to curve this a little bit. This is where it can be challenging with a motor like this, because it's got three wires coming out of three of the cooling holes. And it's like, what the, where, where? I usually don't see that. But check it out, guys. 2210 kV, baby. So that should spin up. That should be fun. That should be globs of fun. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna push this wire to the side. See if I can go in from this angle right here. See if I can get that in there. That's gonna be hard to do, but let's try. Uh, let me go with this. Okay, well, let me grab a different one here. Let's go through here. Or maybe I can go through here. Let's try this. Sometimes there's a little trial and error when you're doing this. It might be better to go through, if I'm gonna put it with this one, uh, no, I don't know if I wanna go through those two, but let's see, um, let's put, let's try it this way. Let me lift this up. Ah, uh, that mounts, that's actually much more flush. So let's try this. Let's take, try to stick that through there again. Yeah, when you got a wire like this that's weird like that, it's sometimes going to be hard to get it across there. Let's see if I can get that in there a bit. Yeah, I'm not really seeing it through the inside. Let me grab, uh, let's do this. I need some light on that subject because I got my contacts in, which is a problem. Check out the girlfriend, beautiful Miss Amy. Here, let's see. Let me zoom. Let me see where I, see if I can see where that's coming out of. Okay, I think I, uh, I think I see it in there, I think. Here, let me do this. Let me grab... Pair of needle nose pliers here as I thumb through some stuff here. See if I got a tool in here. Needle nose. Just looking for some pliers, guys. Let's see here. Let's try. Actually, let me see if this will work. I've got a pair of these hemostats in there. I think I can see where it is. No, nope, I can't really see down in there. Here, let's go look down in there one more time. I think that's what I'm looking at right there. Here, let's see. Yeah, this one's a little more of a challenge because it's got those, yeah, it's got that wire in the way. I have not seen one actually that does that. So yeah, this is, this is a challenge. Yeah, that's gonna be hard to get that in there. I may just have to go, let's try this one. Okay, that one, that one's going right in. That's an easy one. Yeah, there it is. So I will look down in there. 
Let's see. Yep. There it is. So I'm going to take, let me take that out. I'm going to take this one that's curved. And here's what I'm going to roll it. Roll that baby. Getting the edge to curve a bit. Take that and put that in there. All right, let's see what we got. Yep, I can see it right through there. All right, let's try. Just looking for a pair of pliers, guys. Let's see. I'm uh, looking for, there they are. Let's see if I can get in there with that even. Let's try this. Let's see. Ah, there we go. What's up, baby? I'm in the live show. I'm in the live show right now. She's she might be up here. Call her name. Let's see. Sorry about that, guys. I'm just trying to reach in there and get that. There we go. Got the tip of that out. That was a tough one. Why don't you go get the food bowl? Amy's right there. She's uh, she just came up the stairs, and she's looking for the cat. Get the food bowl. Put some food in it and shake it. She'll come. She'll come running. I think she was up here a little while ago. Yeah, and but I don't know if she left or she might be asleep in the closet or Maybe something. She got outside when I, opened the door. I don't think so. So here, let me get this going up. Now you guys can see I'm deep in surgery here. Not a big deal. You got her? Okay. Yeah. So let's get in on this. And uh, she's doing a cat search. Full cat search. So let's see. Might even need a smaller zip tie to get that thing in there push this in there. Sorry about that, folks. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, that's a tight, uh, there's definitely a very tight hole there. I'm surprised. There we go. What's that? You want to come, uh, can you walk this way carefully? Move that trash can. So, all right, Amy's going to show you Ripley the cat. She was here in my video the other day. There she is. <laughs> so there's Ripley. Oh, watch it. Yep. There's a plane right there. Yeah, be careful. There's planes everywhere. That's Ripley the cat. Hey, she matches the plane. She matches the airplane. Look at that. Perfect match to the plane. No problem. No problem. So she wants some food. So you can go get her some food. While I'm fitting this through. All right, babe, I should be done soon. Just throwing some fire on this thing. So you see here, I got this through. It took a little work getting that down in there, but once you feed it, you got to push one end and pull the other. It can be kind of a pain like that, and what I'm going to do is feed this end, which is all mangled now. I'm going to feed that through and just get it ready to be sort of locked into place. And then let me see if I can do, I may do, let's see, uh, you need an electric stick screwdriver. Yeah, tell me about it. Let's see, so we're going to put this here. I really don't want to put it on that one and that one. I'd rather put it on this one and this one. You can notice there's not one that goes directly across. So you have to do sort of a, you know, I might be able to go fully. Now, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to still try and get that one in there. Let's, let's try that. I got one in place. So all I got to do is get the second one and then we can just kind of lock it in. I'll probably cut this bit of the tab off because we don't need the screw for this one. So yeah, sometimes you run into a tight fit like this, but you know, we're going to see if we can make this work here. Um, this particular, um, um, this particular zip tie is like kind of sort of weak on the end for pushing through. It's almost like if I had a harder surface one, it would go a little better. Um, but let's try. I'm trying not to get my head in there. Sorry about that. All right, let's see if I can feed this through carefully, little by little. If I can get that to go through this side just a little at a time. Sometimes this takes a little bit of little doing. Plus I'm wearing contacts and glasses so my vision's not not as good that way as when I have my bare eyesight. Okay so there it is. I see it through there. Let me try to go in here with this. That's gonna be hard to get. You gotta be careful not to damage wires in there that's all. Most of the time you can do that okay without doing that. Um, yeah let's see. I need a little bit of up here. Let's do this. I think I have a tool here, maybe. Yeah, here we go. Let's try this. I got one of these. It's kind of like a little dental pick thing. I'll be careful with that, but I think with the light in there, I think I can go in there 
and very carefully, very surgically, without grabbing any crazy wires or anything, I can just grab the plastic. Yeah, I see it down there. See if I can turn that. Yeah, that's hard to see down there. Let's do this. I'm going to pop that out. I'm going to do a little curve on this because I want this to curve up. Same deal again. Just roll that. I don't know if it's going to hold that curve that well. But let's see. Yeah, let's see. I'm trying to get that in there. Let's do the same thing again. Get that started. Just little by little, push it in there. And maybe it'll curve up a little better this time. All right. I think I can see it better now. Yeah, this is turning into a, a deal here. All right, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Let me back it out just a little bit. And I think if I back that out, oh, no. Hang on a second. What am I seeing? Oh, I'm seeing? oh, I'm seeing something else in there. I'm not even seeing the thing. Okay, so let's do this. Now that we've got the curve in there. Try to get this. It's kind of funny that they would block three of the cooling holes, three of the seven cooling holes with wires. So usually on the FMS stuff, there's no wires in the way. So but let's see. Let's get. Man, it's really hard to get that down in there, isn't it? Uh, it's going in there now. See if I can see where that's going. Let's try to turn it around this way. This turned out to be a little more of an ordeal than I wanted it to be. Here, let's see. And I thought it would be. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't want to go in there, does it? Here, let's see. See if I can get a light on there. Yeah, that is hard to see down in there. Yeah, I'm running into it. There's a magnet there, but it's not, it's not affecting any of that. It's just hard to get this in there. Let me see. Yeah, it's really not going in there too far. Let's try this. See if I can push that aside just a little bit. And let me grab another one out of a package. Let me see if I have an older zip tie that's a little tougher. It's like I need a, I feel like I need a slightly tougher one. Here, let's go. Ah, here's what I'm going to do. Let's try, let's try one of these. This is a different one from a different batch. Try this. Man, that does not want to go in there. Let me try doing, let's do this. Let's try going through a different hole. Yeah, I can see that just fine. That's going through there perfectly. Here, let me see if I can zoom in a little more. Ooh, yeah. All right, we'll move this thing farther this way. Yeah, that thing doesn't want to doesn't want to be seen over there. Let's see if I can slide this. Yeah, it's turned into a pain in the butt doing this one. Uh, yeah, it would be better if I could get it in there though. Let's see if I can maneuver this around. It's almost like if I had a smaller zip tie, I'd be in better shape. Let me see. I'll tell you what. Let's try. I'm going to try to squeak this thing in there. It is going in there this time. But I don't think I'm seeing it on the inside. Oh, wow. That's a... Can't even, sorry for the head thing, guys. I'm just trying to look in there to see where it went, where it's going. Here, let's see something. I'm going to see if I can find in a different bag. I think I might be able to pull. I'm down here. Let's try this. This is a this is a different zip tie. This is one that's just kind of hanging around. Let's try this one. This one's white, so I might be able to see it better as it goes in there. And it may be smaller enough to go in there. Let's try. As it goes down, I might see it better. Let's see if I can get that in there. That's just one I had hanging around. I 
think that's going in. But where is it? Oh, I think I see it now. Nope, still don't know where it is. <laughs> it's like it's disappearing when I put it in there. Let's pull that out. Try this again. I'm just going to roll it this time. I didn't do that last time. Let's see. So this motor may be better suited for one with an outer, you know, amount where it does go around the outside. So, you know, maybe the zip tie thing isn't the best way for this one. But let's see if I can get that down in there. Let's see there. Just trying to carefully get that down in there. I may just have to go with a different hole. Be off center a bit, but I'd rather have it in this one if I can get it in there. Let's see, where is that going? Man, I don't see at all where that thing is going in there. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. All right, let's see. How many guys we got watching still? Let's see. Uh, we dropped off a little bit down to 30 some odd, but I want to get this thing lit, so I'm going to get this thing in there one way or another. Let's try to do. Uh, See, I'm either going to go this one or I'm going to go this one. So I might just have to go through this way. I kind of don't want to do that, but you know, let's do this. I just think it would be more centered if I could get it through the other one. See, all I'd have to do this way is just go through here, and then that's it. So that's typically how you, all you have to do, but I really wanted to get it next to that wire in there. I really don't see why that's not. I guess it's kind of blocked off there, but let me see if I pop it on this way. Here, let me go. Get that out of there. Let me put one of these black ones back in just to maybe make it disappear a little better. Might be a better way for me to pull this across. In fact, I'm going to go from this side. See how easy that was? All I got to do is pull that that way. But, but again, it's just, just having a hard time with that darn wire. So, all right, let's see. If I take that actual, the actual burner Put that in here. Oh, you know what? That, that's probably, yeah, it'll probably be a little off center. That, well, you know what I, oh, you know what I could probably do? Here, let's try this. Let's see if I can go through this hole. Might be able to go through that hole instead. Oh, you know what? That's probably the way to go. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. That works nice. So let me pull this wire through. Yeah, that's way better. Instead of going all the way around the thing, I'm gonna go through that hole. Oh, that'll center it up nice, I think. Yeah, let's try that. So here we go. I'll throw this in there. This is actually how easy it should be, but um, I guess that hole gives me another mounting option, it looks like. So here's what we're going to do. If you all can see that. Yeah, I'm going to mount this through that hole instead for right now and see how that works. So let's get this. That worked out pretty good. Um, I don't think I'm going to bother with the glue. I think I'm just going to secure this. And I'm going to go all the way around. Oh, yep, that's going to do it. That is going to be it. I'm going to go all the way around this thing such that, let's see, somebody sent me a message. No, let me see. Someone sent me messages or something. Nope. All right, so let's take this. Let me turn my, uh, turn my uh, thing off here, my light. I don't drain my phone. There we go. And then we're going to secure this down in place. So let's get... Pull this in such a way that I don't pull this one through. So let me push this down in there a little bit. Yeah, different mounting. Sometimes you run into troubles like this. It's just the game of the game, folks. So, but you want to do this in a way that you're not blocking a bunch of holes. So this way is going to kind of block up one, but I don't have a choice. So let's see how that's going to go. Um, actually, it kind of keeps that open a bit. Yeah, I don't know if I like that just because they're blocking the cooling hole. So let's try this instead. Let's take, yeah, that's an interesting, that's a perfect center. It's almost dead center, but it kind of cuts the, uh, it kind of does block a hole. So let's do this. Let's take, um, let's take a flush cutter here. And let me, uh, let me just cut this one off because I'm going to go with a different mount here. Let's try that, something different. Let's see if I can go all the way around and clip that off. I think... That might be sort of a better way to do that. 
Um, yeah, see, that blocks up too much cooling hole action, I think is what that does. Yeah, I don't know if I like the way that's going to go in. Yeah, see, that's blocking. That leaves like two cooling holes. Yeah, probably not the way to go. So let's do this. I'm going to take, let's try this. I think we can keep that hole clear if I get rid of this. So I'm going to remove this one side hole. I hope this doesn't pop this thing off. You see what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to trim it a little at a time. I hope that doesn't snap the whole thing off. This is like a resin material. Yeah, I'm hoping that doesn't break the whole thing off. It shouldn't, but so here we go. Yeah, that breaks, that takes that off. Sometimes you got to modify this to do what you need it to do. There we go. So let's see if I can get that one up close. Okay, that one's not going to make it. That way it'll keep that pole open. And then this one, I think we're looking at the same thing. I think I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm just going to pop that whole thing off too. Yeah, this is one where the screws are not going to apply, I don't think, or the holes. And if I use them, I'm going to block up too much cooling. So, you know, let's just carefully do this. This stuff chips away a little at a time. Like I said, it's a resin. I don't want to take too much off because I don't want to break the... Yeah, there we go. There you go. I'm basically turning this back into a standard thing without the holes. <laughs> um, let's see. And then I'm going to take, if I have, I'm going to take this, a file, and I'm going to flatten this a bit. So let's take this. Because I don't want to leave a... Yeah, that files very easily. That's good. There you go. So I'm basically turning this into a standard, a regular mount instead of the screw mount. And the screw mounts are just getting in the way. If you find the screw mounts are going to block your cooling holes, you know, just, just get rid of them. There we go. So there we go. Now we're back to sort of the normal mount without the holes. And let's see how that will fit. Yeah, that's much better. That's not blocking as much. What I, again, what I don't understand is why Freewing would put, why they would block up half of the cooling holes with wires instead of just running them out the side. I guess that's just their design. So yeah, I'd love to put it in right there, but it looks like I'm probably going to get stuck putting it like right. Uh, yeah, you see, I can't really mount it any other way. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, man, I wish I could put it in that one, though. I just can't get that darn thing in there. Let me try again. I'm going to try one more time with one of these and see if I can just get that. It's kind of funny. It should be popping right out when I do that, but it's, for some reason, it's going into oblivion there. I'm not able to see it anywhere. See here, let's get the light back on. Try that. Uh, yep, yeah, that's a magnet down there. I really can't tell where that darn thing is going. All right, here. Let's see if I can get that. Uh, yep, yeah, it does not want to go in there. So we're just going to put it on the other side. I kind of hate doing that, but that's just what we got to do. So let me, let me go the other way with this. Just rolling this again. Putting that in here. Now we'll curve it again. There we go. Yeah, a, a different burner might be the thing to do with this. Yeah, I see what you guys are saying. Yeah, you may need a different mount for this one. That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, but this is what I got. So. You know, you may want a Guniac mount or something, and that may be a better way to go for this. You can, either way, it's going to be, whether you put it in this hole and this hole, it's going to be a little off-center. That's just kind of the way it is. So you may need to go with a different one for this particular motor. But let's see how, let's see how it goes. Let me see if I can get this in there and see what happens. So either way, it's going to be off-center. It's just that I could lean this thing up against those wires um, uh, by using it that way, but those wires are so thick. 
it's just not going to allow that to happen. So let's try this. I'm going to see if I can get this lined up right on there. It's probably going to be a little off center. That's what's going to happen. I'm not going to be able to change that at all. So I'm going to put this along here because that wire hole is totally blocked. So there's no, I just, I'm kind of surprised they would do that though. I'm surprised that they would take this thing and run it in such a way that you got half the holes blocked by the wires for crying out loud. That's kind of a weird, kind of an unusual way to do that. But hey, that's what they did. That's how they did it. So let me see if I can feed that down in there better. I have to get that down in there. There we go. That's it. That's what I'm trying to do. Get that down in there. Just curving it and feeding it. Yep, this might be a better, it may be a better example, like I said, for a different mount, different case type mount. So, but let's see if I can get this to go on this way. This is going to be a little off center. It's not, it's not going to be my favorite install, I think, but um, my favorite way to do it. But let me see if I can put, either way, this is going to, see if I can get that because the idea is not to block cooling holes and there's already some blocked on the other side so let's see if I can get this on there nice looks like I got it on there okay that's that's tough enough um, and uh, as long as you're not like I said as long as you're not blocking the cooling which is what I'm trying to get avoid from if I was on the other side it would be better so I'll probably fool with that a little later I'm going to see if I can, because when I get my contacts out, I can see better, and I can probably get that thing down in there, but I'm having a hard time getting it through there. So, um, so let's see if I can get that centered. Yeah, I'm not totally happy with that, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to light it up, get it installed. I'm going to pull this. It's on there pretty tight. It's not, it's not coming off. So it's on there nice and tight. And then I'm going to fiddle with it after the video and see if I can get it to lock in there, and then and we'll, we'll, we'll update you more on the video. Like I said, if I could put it closer to there and squeeze it in closer to this, this, this wire, it would do a little less, I think, cooling hole blocking. It's hard to say. But uh, so here's what I'm going to do for right now, just so we can get it in there and see it. Um, I'm going to unclip this. I'm going to unclip that, get rid of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this right here. There we go. And I'm going to cut this one, okay. And we've got still got four out of the four out of the, the seven cooling holes, you know, not blocked. But you know they got three of them free. We already did three of them, blocked three of them up. So let me pull from the front here, pull that wire through. Let me back off on the zoom so y'all can see what's going on. This is all going to go through here together. Stick that down in there, and we're doing okay. Yeah. So now we're in there blow all the parts out of there and I think we're in place there we go so I'm gonna look down the tailpipe it looks like we are pretty secure and I think that's it we got it in there so um, like I said I'll revise that I'm gonna go in there and take a real good look at that thing and see if I can if I can alter that any later and then I'll show you a picture of it later when I do get it in there because I'll, I'll know I'll get it in there okay so uh, okay just making sure all our wires are going down Dropping this in place, and that's it. So I'm going to secure that fan in there. Oh, yeah, that'll look nice. A little bit off-center, but yeah. I'll fix that later. I'll mess with that. But I just want to get, get it lit up so we can see the burner and how it looks. So, all right, here we go. We're going to get this in place. Let's go here with our screws. Put one down in there. Get this thing secured. So, yeah, crazy on that motor. Most of the time, you just got those exit wires coming out of the side of the motor or something, not the back, really, or not so big anyway. At least there's some space there. But here, we'll get this in place. Yeah, like I, like I said, I'll go in and fool with it later. Probably remount it. But anyway, feeding the wires through there, getting this set up, no big deal. Let's see. Yep. Yep, that is it. All right, so get this back in place. Put that in there. There we go. Grabbing these small screws. There they are. Nope. My desk is going nuts. So here we go. 
Drop that in. Drop that in. Drop that in. Here we go. There we go. Make sure that goes down flush. Definitely don't want to over tighten these. There's a lot of self tapping screws on this plane. You want to be careful not to over tighten them. Let's back them off, let them thread into place. There we go. That's it. Grab my two millimeter. Pop the ventrals back in place. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I think this motor might benefit from a better, different mount, but I'll make it work. I just got to be able to see it without my contacts in, so, and be able to shine a light down there, but I can't do it with the contacts in because it kills my close vision. All right, here we go. Put this back on. Pop that into place. Very easy to work with the airplane, though. Let's see. There we go. All right, let's get back a little bit. All right. And that, that is it, burner secure. So actually it's pretty centered actually, fairly, fairly centered. So, so here we go, let's, uh, let's take, uh, go back to our regular view. Man, that was a pain, huh? Now, actually, it's very simple. It's just I was trying to get it next to that one wire, and it just wasn't happening. So I'm going to take this battery, throw it in here. There we go. And now what we have is this. See, we can reconnect this in place, okay? And that way I didn't have to pull the whole board through. So that's the beauty of that. So let's take our tester. And I'll grab that uh, right over here. Switch views. And we're going to light this baby up. Let's make sure gear's on here. Let's raise this up. Oh. Coming up, coming up. And then we're going to light this whole thing off. Do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do. Let me grab a different battery. Take this one here. All right, we will plug this thing in. So let's go attach our battery, attach our tester, and uh, attach this, the control. And we light the burner. There it is. Let's see if I can get that a little higher. I think that the height of my, yeah, that's as high as it goes. Yep, that's it. All right, so there's our burner lit up. There we are as it goes into purple, so very nice. And here, let me see if I can center it on the camera here a little better. So you guys can see it's pretty centered. It's a little off center on the motor, but it's still, you're not gonna be able to tell that in the air. And I'm gonna get it centered against those wires, it'll fit. So let's try the next mode. Let's try one more click. We're gonna light it up, that goes to another mode. Let's click it again. Now we have just our steady kind of uh, blue. There it is, goes to orange. Click it again, there we go, and I think this is, you know, no, that's the last mode. So again, a few different modes for this, let me click one more time. This is just blue, there it is, and click it one, get back, and one more, and then it goes back to just, I think this is just the orange. So here, let's do this. Let me kill, let me kill the lights in here. There's a switch over here, let me run over, run over and get that. Walk over here, get past all the boxes, the pit of boxes. There we go. Let's turn all that down. There's your burner. KMRC burner. All right. I will get that in there. <laughs> I just can't see it with my, I need my bare eyes to do that, to make that correct. Otherwise, I can't really see it that well. So there you go. That's your, that's your stock KMRC burner, just with the version 4 there with... Um, here, let's see, let me, get, uh, let me get a little zoom on that. Yeah, baby. Let's go with that. Very nice, very nice. I like it, so there we go, that all lit up. 
And let's go to the, that's mode one. Let's go there to mode uh, two. Let's try that. That's going to go sort of purple, orange, blue. Uh, next mode. All right, that goes up. Next mode, that's just blue with the pulsating. So very neat. That comes on. I don't know if that brings some orange in. Yeah. So very cool. There we go. Rich, put it on setting number four. Okay, I think this is four. Hang on a sec. Let me go. Uh, that's, well, let me see. That's blue only. Okay, let's see. Let me go back. I'm going to click it one time and see where this one goes. This is orange. This is mode one. Okay, this is orange mode, mode one. Okay, let me click the button again. This should be mode two. Okay. This should be, click it again, this should be mode three. All right, and this should be mode four if I'm clicking it right. So that starts off in blue, you know, so that's like your idle thrust, which that's a lot of times what you see. And then as it comes up, it starts going a little more yellow. And then, uh, yeah, it goes into a burn, like in purple it looks like. So I'm trying not to smoke this thing either. Remember, I don't have any, um, um, I don't, I don't have any, um, um, way of telling which one exactly it is, but, um, yeah, that's cool. I got no airflow over this darn thing, but that's just the blue, I think, yeah, that's just solid blue. It's supposed to have five modes, the air hammer's asking, so, yeah, see, uh, the Guniax booty covers all and only has one small hole at the end. Oh, it covers all of them. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, well, here's the thing, guys. Um, um, I, uh, this thing fits okay as far as I'm concerned, just the way that it is. Um, here, let me back off. This is, this, is, this is mounted decently the way it is, but three of the seven holes are already blocked. So I'm trying to get the burner as close as I can to those three wires so I leave the other four completely open. I will get it into that thing. I just can't, with my contacts in, I can't see that close and really get it in there. And I'll probably find like a smaller, I may even run a wire in there and twist it or something, something really thin that goes in there or something. But uh, I may need just a smaller zip tie. But when I have my contacts, I'll be able to see that better and be able to kind of tweak that around in there. But either case like this, there's still mostly four of the, of the seven holes are uncovered. Already they block three of them with the wire. So they only give you four to start with for cooling anyway. So... But I'll get it over there and, um, you know, and it's just going to take a little finagling. But for the most part, it's pretty centered in there. I mean, look at it right now. It's pretty decent. You can't even tell. And it's, and it's secured in there pretty good. So um, here, let me go back to, uh, let's see, where are we at? This is, this is just the standard burner mode right here. Your regular. Again, I'll walk through the modes again. And then here's the thing. Press and hold the button. Three seconds. One, two, three. And then release it. It goes out. Okay, so... This is, this is what happens when you, you know, calibrate it and you turn it on, you know, your throttle. I'm at zero throttle now. I start bringing it up, and then the afterburner kicks in, and then it just goes pure yellow, pure orange. So I'll go to, mo that's mode one. Mode two, I'll light it up here, and then it'll turn a little bit purple, okay? And then this is idle again. This is mode three. I'm putting the throttle on. It's coming out of, way out of idle. It goes orange. The blue and the purple kick in again. And then I'll click it again. This should be uh, mode, and this is three or four. I've lost track. Uh, no, this is, this is uh, yeah, this is uh, four, I think. It starts off, you see, even, and, if you, and if you just increase it a little bit, it starts flickering a bit. And then that's your low, and then it starts going to orange. So that's your mode four there, I'm pretty sure. And then let me click again. This should be mode five, which I think, that blue to purple, yeah. It almost seems like it has six modes, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. So this is the beginning. This should just be just blue, I think. Yeah, this just goes blue. There you go. And then back to mode one again, which should be just all orange. So there you go. You got all that. So, and again, this is holding it for three seconds. So if I hold it for three more seconds, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, and release it. Now it's at idle. It's on at idle again. So, um, so yeah, blue to orange is cool. EQRC, yeah, I think you're right. I think the fourth one is probably the coolest one. So that's mode one, two, three, four. So let me see. I don't want this thing to go supernova on me. So let me turn it off. Okay, I did the three seconds on it. So 
Um, let me see which one is this one. Nope. Let's click it again. I think this is, is this four? Yeah, it starts off in blue and then go, no, that's all blue. Let me go here. Yeah, I kind of clicked it a bunch of times. That's the, that's the first one. That's one, two, three, four. So let's try this. Yeah, this starts off in blue, I think. Yeah, there we go. That's fourth mode. And then starts adding some orange and purple to it. Yeah, I think. Let's see. That, yeah. No, 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 hang on. Lost track here. Let's see, which is this? That starts in blue. Yep, yeah, stays blue. This one is orange. Yeah, stays orange. So that's one. This should be two. Yeah, that's two. This one's three. Yeah, and then this one should be four. Should start off blue. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Starts blue and then starts coming in with the orange and the purple. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool, guys. Blue to orange looks like uh, most real. Yeah, that's uh, Craig Beaven there. So, um, all right, guys, I think that's it. We have uh, we beat this thing to death. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm into it. Um, um, we've got uh, for everybody... Um, you know, that's it. We got it set up. It's looking good. Um, I will get that fixed. I just, I'll get it next to that thing. I just, like I said, I can't see it with my eyes the way they are right now, contacts in. So let's try another mode. That's just your standard. I tell you, that's really bright though. Holy smokes. So, wow. Yeah, it lights up the whole tail of fuselage. So um, even the underside probably, let's see. Yeah, so that whole thing lights up. Yeah, that'll look good in the dusk. That'll look nice. So, all right, let me throw the light back on. All right, get that, get that out of here. Doesn't really look that dark in here, but man, for me, it's dark. Let's see. The camera adds some light. Let's go. All right, folks. I think that's about it. I think we're going to wrap this baby up. Um, appreciate everybody watching. Let me unplug this thing. Let me get everything unplugged so we don't maybe start making some of our own smoke or something here. Let's see. And then we'll lock this down. Let me get this in here so we got weight up front. Let me throw the canopy back on, and we'll kind of take another look at it, just sort of static here. And, uh, and that's pretty much it, folks. Got it all locked up. Other than the snag with the burner, um, this thing went really smooth. Um, it went together super nice. Let's see, let's get that down. Let's grab some of those missile rails. Hey, does anybody know what these are? These little things sticking out? You know, uh, if somebody knows, shout that out. Because I'm trying to understand what that is on the full-scale airplane. This thing right here. If anybody knows what that is, right there. I don't know if it's some sort of a pitot tube or a probe or something. Um, but if anyone knows what that is, shout it out. Because I'm just curious as to what it is on the full scale. So let me pop that on. Again, those need to be glued. The wing rails. Um, so that's the only thing you glue on this thing is that. And then these two things right here, which I just stuck on here, and I didn't, didn't glue these. These are, these are your sort of trailing edges for your fuselage, but they're also like a, they're a speed brake is what they are on the full-scale airplane. So you just glue those on. I just stuck them on there just for the purposes of getting this assembled here, like pretty quick. So, um, and that is it. Let's get the last one on. So and let's see. So uh, that is it, folks. She's ready to rock and roll. All I got to do is put a receiver in it, um, you know, get it set up, and uh, we'll be ready to take it out there. Probably get it out there tomorrow or the next day. Uh, me and Wes will get out there and kind of fly them around, have fun with them, get some uh, video of everything. So, um, and that's it. Anybody got any questions? Anyone want to throw anything out there? Uh, let's see. Some kind of sensor on the real one. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if it's some sort of probe or pedo or, or something or other like that. So... Um, that's coming from uh, uh, Raji RC. So uh, let's see what we got. Uh, it says you got three hole blocked and two more half ass blocked. Yeah, that's from Craig Baven. Yeah, no, I agree. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. It, it might be better with an outer casing type, um, um, you know, mount like uh, like Guniac has. I might actually have one around here somewhere. Um, or 5280. 5280's got some outer case ones. But here's the thing. I'll get it next to those wires that are blocked, and I'll have the other four freed open. I, like I said, I just can't see it with my contacts in. With my bare eyes, I can see it better. So, Fly RC just came into the house. 
Um, there's one in the center of the vertical at the base. Yeah, like this. Yeah, that maybe is another sensor of some sort. I don't, I don't really know. Um, in fact, a lot of F-16s sometimes have a little fin right here. This one doesn't have that, but I don't know enough about it. So, But yeah, I dig this thing. Check it out. Nice paint job. It's nice and camo. It's going to be very easy to see. When I get this out to the, uh, the RC Informer field, we'll be able to see this against the tree background really easily. It's going to be nice. It's going to be very, very, very visible. So um, i got to get those glued on. I'll probably throw a little CA on those. I'll probably use a medium CA to stick that on. Probably a medium CA to put that on also too. So, um, but that's it. Anybody got any questions? Any uh, last minute things you guys want to talk about? This went together very nicely. I had no problems with it really at all. Um, just got to work. Just got to think about a little bit those two those tail screws that hold that the the stabilator in place. Um, I'll use those screws probably. But I'll just flatten them. I'll take a grinder, Dremel tool, or something. Just flatten the tips of those self tapping screws so it, so it locks on better. Um, uh, someone said, uh, Raj ERC says he's actually installing the free wing, uh, tail flame on mine right now. Okay. So, um, I think do this mount with screws on yours. I don't know how that goes on there. So if it works better than, then use that. So, um, but this seems that again, this is fine too. And I'll get it next to that wire. So it's not blocking those holes. So, so yeah, there's a few that are half ass kind of blocked, but I'll, I'll, I'll get it back on the other side. Let's see motion, put the missiles, uh, in the kits. Uh, oh, motion, put the missiles, motion, put the missiles, be, be in the not going to kill you. I don't know what that means. <laughs> trying to read that. Let's see. Motion, put the missiles, uh, missiles, be, yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, I can't really see what that is. Uh, no, I'm, this thing's trying to hide a report or something. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. Let's see. There we go. Later, pilots. EQRC is out. It mounts with a cap on the end of the motor. Okay, yeah, and, and that would be a great way to do it. So, yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't had to put one of those in there. So, I haven't mounted one yet. So, but, uh, but yeah, this this will this will go on there fine. Like I said, I'll make it fit where it's supposed to fit. So, um, and that's it, guys. Throw questions at me if there's anything else you want to ask. Let me know. Um, I think we went through most everything today. I think I hit all the points and everything I wanted to talk about. And get this thing together so we can get it out there hopefully like i said tomorrow i'm hoping for so uh but very cool it went together nice minimal trouble um and that is it guys i think i think we're done uh I'm trying to find my list because i had a list of stuff written down but i think we covered pretty much everything i wanted to go over i usually have a little where's my written thing eh, i misplaced it that's okay um but that's it folks um, I'm just trying to see if anybody uh, has anything else uh, they want to go for. I'm looking, uh, I'm actually going to go down the chat log because I missed a few things. Um, I think setting four is the nicest for the burner. Uh, yeah, cooling issues is, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I don't want to, I'm just surprised they blocked three of the seven holes with the darn wires. Uh, let's see. I want a 90 millimeter now, laugh out loud. <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, but uh, I think the 70s and the 80s on the F-16 are the best. Giveaway plane, laugh out loud. Yeah, we'll probably do some giveaways. We'll probably be doing that. May end up giving one of these away. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Let's see. Yeah, the suspension's nice on this. It does work well. Yeah, very cool. Like I said, that nose gear is not as scale as we'd like it to be, but it's, it'll hit, hit all the abuse and handle grass and all that stuff. So, um, but... Uh, Let's see. Let me go to the bottom of the thing. Uh, when are we going to fly it? Uh, that's from Nabil. Probably going to fly it tomorrow, we hope. Tomorrow or the next day. We'll get it out there in a day or two here. Uh, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, I'll have to check out the Motion RC mount for this. If it is a better mount, that would be a good way to go. But, again, this will fit. Like I said, I just got to I just gotta get it so it's... um. So it's through that one wire hole, then it won't block anything. So, and I'll, I'll make it fit. Or I'll use a smaller zip tie, a thinner one, um, a tinier one that'll fit through there. So, and maybe even use two of them or something. So, but I'll figure it out and make it work. So, um, all right, guys, I think that's it. I think we're going to sign it off. Uh, check out the Futuras at FMS. Um, check out your Avanti here and uh, over at Hobby Zone. I got links for all that below. Um, Blue Jay Trainer, awesome airplane um, at Fair RC. Got a link for that below as well, too. Remember, guys, 
keep your money, get a, get a good airplane, you know, and, uh, but use my link. It supports the channel at no cost to you guys. So I do appreciate you guys using that. Uh, Rich, you're done. Anything uh, with the Freewing 104? I'm hoping to continue that at some point. Uh, first time I flew it was the last time. It, it had a crash at, at Nall in the fall. It flew fantastic. flew great. But the last time around, the elevator horn had pulled out of the elevator, the glued-in part. It wasn't really in there too secure. It came out and it just kind of dove in. It was mostly, I mean, it's beat up a little bit. I could fix it, but I'll probably fix it here later. Just having time to get back to it. But if all goes well, I'll do some more Starfighter stuff because I love that airplane. So, um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that for sure because I, I, I like that, uh, the, the, the missile with the man in it. So, um, and that's it, guys. So, uh, unless there's any more questions, we're probably going to sign off. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. We've been here for about three hours, so it's a pretty good live show. Had lots of good, uh, lots of good views. I really appreciate everybody coming by to watch. Uh, Wesley and I will be getting these out and flying them. You know, um, uh, check out Motion RC because they have the gray version. Wesley did the unboxing of that there, and um, and um, you know, same airplane, just different paint job. Uh, check all this stuff out. Like I said. At, um, check all these out at the various websites. Um, uh, Motion RC does have this. You can check out all the features. I do have the link below for this as well. So if you guys take a look, uh, let me see if I can tap that and get that on. So if you go to Motion RC's site, you know, this is what you're going to see. If you go back a bit, um, like here's the gray one, for example. Uh, let me see. No, yeah, there it is. This is the page. So what do they have here? They've got, they've got their 90 millimeter. Oh, they got their 64. They got their 90 millimeter. Um, they got the 70 Arctic camo, which you're seeing here, and they've got the 70. There it is, right here. That's the gray one. That's the one Wesley just showed everybody. Same plane as this, just different color. So if you guys like the gray, they have it in the gray too. So you know, check it out there. So officially licensed product by Lockheed Martin. So there you go. It was originally, uh, F-16 was originally uh, General Dynamics, if you guys remember. Had a red, white, and blue paint job, the early wood. Mm. So, uh, so that's it, guys. Check that out there. Again, as always, if you guys haven't already, and you guys like the content, you guys like what you're seeing here, um, as always, just share our videos around. I appreciate that, everybody helping out with that. Um, share our videos. Also, uh, you know, if you like what you're seeing, uh, like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. That'll let you know when we put uh, more videos out. So let me uh, unclick this. I'm trying to get to the, what the heck just happened? Oh, there we go. I lost a, uh, I lost a mode there. I was trying to get rid of that screen. So um, let me put this back so I can see the chat log. I have to keep tapping on my screen to get different things on there where I'm trying to, trying to do. So let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll fly it tomorrow probably or next day. Um, what do we got? I think the Motion RC one mounts better, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't have all the modes. Yeah, it just has a single mode, that's the thing. Um, like I said, this will fit through that wire hole. I'll make it fit, I just like I said, my contact's hard to see. I, I need to have my eyes, bare eyes, because I can see closer without my uh, contacts in better. Um, the, the reading glasses don't, don't cut it enough. Um, is that 90 millimeter worth it? That I don't know. I, I haven't flown it. Um, it's bigger, it's heavier. It's Probably a little, maybe a little faster. I don't know the speed on it, but um, let's see. Uh, I was told it's a dog. Okay, yeah, it might be. I, I don't know. Um, I flew with one once. I had an F-18, and the other guy had the F-16. I, the one I saw was faster than all get out, but it was heavy. It was, you know, it was not a, it wasn't a dog. It was fast. So, um, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's. Um, I think the 70 to 80 millimeter size in the F-16s is, is, is more ideal, the 70 to 80s, you know. Um, so even the 64s are, are cool, but I think the 70 to 80 size is, is good, is, is, is preferred, I guess you could say, or, or better, better, uh, better received, I guess you could say, too. So, um, All right, guys, with that, I want to thank everybody for watching. Stay tuned. More videos are coming as we build the RC Informer field, as we get more airplanes like all of these out to fly them and demo them. And, you know, you'll see me doing some Motion RC stuff. Still doing plenty of FMS stuff as well. Um, and, of course, Hobby Zone, Fair RC, which is another, you know, entity of, uh, of FMS. So, 
Um, stay tuned for this one. This one's going to be cool. This Blue Jay trainer, all in one, ready to fly. I'm going to try and edit that week and crank it out this week and get and crank it out there so you all can see it because it's a really great trainer. Again, same plane as the FMS um, 220 millimeter Ranger, same airplane, but in a more a different paint job, a little more economical package. Again, the only thing that disappoints me about it is they didn't paint the window black, but they were trying to cut costs and keep it. But you know, for 169 bucks for a ready to fly that really is ready to fly that you could really learn on is awesome. So I'll throw a little paint on the, the window. So, um, but anyway, that's it guys. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I'll let y'all go now. As always guys, we'll see y'all next time.